and welcome to my complete absence of viewers. Today on Life with Laura, it's your guide to life in the Silas University Library. Should you find yourself spending your summer vacation inside a sentient library, the first thing to do is figure out if the architecture slash life form that you're dwelling in is full on Amityville horror evil or just kind of a capricious dink. One clue may be the way that it treats Cranky and I invulnerable vampires. as opposed to tiny, broken-hearted college girls who might be, for perfectly valid reasons, sort of kind of wallowing over past mistakes. Oh. <clears throat> Not that the wallowing has continued. Nothing like two months hiding in the stacks because the library is the only place that you're safe from the ancient evil who played you for a chump, to put things in perspective. Which brings us to cuisine. A crucial skill when your sole food source is vending machines is creativity. Need a smoothie? How about a nozzle coffee and granola bar whip up? Perfect camp dinner? How about a beef jerky casserole? Craving a salad? So am I. Of course, there is the option to eat out. Really, really far out. See, near as Laugh's been able to figure, the library contains, well, everything, and so any one space, like this room, can connect to anywhere else. Which means when you open a door, maybe you get a hallway, or maybe you get an undersea world filled with a really angry shrimp. The good news is that Laugh's been able to crack the code for Howl's Moving Library. Well, at least one part of it. Three to the left for the central fountain. Whoa. Yeah. Two right for snowy Uberval. Yep. Yeah. That one's cold. Uh, five to the right. It's a live volcano. Five is a live volcano. Oh. Uh, oh, but I do have this really cool one. Okay. Two up, two down. Cyberpunk dystopia. With that nailed, there's nothing left to fear. Except for fear herself. You may remember that we lost track of Perry and JP after I after Corvée stormed HQ? Well, despite the fact that all off-campus communication has been shut down by a firewall, even laugh can't breach, we did start to get some transmissions. Good morning, students of Silas. I know many of you are still recovering from the unfortunate events of last semester. And my altered state might be shocking. But let me assure you, my struggling dears, your dean will never give you up. With the generous sponsorship of our friends at Corvée, Silas will rise again. And no one, no matter what dank little hole they're currently hiding in, will interfere with our glorious unearthing of knowledge. See you in class, my dears. Oh, you mother dried up, saggy t wench of a woman masquerading as a sadistic, narcissistic piece of sh That wasn't. She can't have just possessed Perry, can she? Oh, no, it's worse than that. Think about it. Raggedy Ann was acting dodgy all semester. N no, I would have seen something. I would have noticed. Oh, yeah, because you weren't too busy ignoring your kidnapping trauma or resurrecting your digital pet into a dead vampire. That had nothing to do with Perry. When could it even have happened? She was with us the whole time. It would have had to have been... Right from the moment she walked in here dripping blood. <laughs> I should have seen it. So perfectly her. How do you breach a wall? Not with a battering ram. You give them a helpless girl and let them invite their doom right in. Months. Perry's been gone for months? After that long, could she still be alive in there? Well, that's the least of our problems. You heard her. She's never gonna let us free, no matter how far we run or where we hide. But we're safe in here. Were you not paying any attention last semester? Nobody is safe anywhere. She'll find a way sooner or later. 
She'll crush us like bugs. She always does this. There's no running, there's no hiding, there's no safe until she's dead. Harm. Yep. You thought living with your ex was awkward? Try being trapped with said ex in a magical library after you got her sister killed and then sacrificing your school and your friends and your morals to save her life. And she still hasn't followed me back on Twitter. And yeah, I know I'm supposed to come up with some brave new plan to stop Corvée instead of letting Carm go a Lizzie Borden on her mother. It's just... I'm not saying I'm pro-evil now. If I see someone kicking a puppy, I won't be all, yay, go about your puppy-kicking business unhindered. It's just... Maybe I'm not the girl to pick a fight with some ancient fiend I could never beat anyway. But what am I talking about? This is a lifestyle show and you don't exist, so... Entertainment. <laughs> When you're trapped inside for two months, cabin fever is a factor. <laughs> Try learning a new skill. Like learning to play the Harry Potter theme on water glasses. Why does this always happen? This just does not get any less gross. Laura, you okay? Did the books from the poli sci section get loose again? No, but our whole water supply did just turn to blood. Apparently the library thinks rogue biographies of Cats and the Great aren't terrifying enough. Are you really sure this is a library? I, I mean, I know it can be kind of unpredictable, but that seems almost biblical. Ugh, why are you two ruining my nap? Did you let out another bibliophage? There's been a small adjustment to our water supply. Oh, and this is bad news because? <laughs> well, for those of us who can't properly judge a steam globin. Mm. Oh. Karma, are you okay? There is something very wrong with this blood. I don't know, it tastes like dead. Wouldn't all blood taste kind of dead? No, this isn't like yesterday dead or three weeks ago dead. This is like predates opposable thumbs dead. Oh, I didn't think I need to bleach my tongue. Why would the library be messing with us? Oh, I don't think this is a library. This isn't its MO. Do you think this We've been be waiting for the other shoe to drop. Strife, pestilence, now water into blood. Do you think she's opened another gate? Sure. Don't worry about me. Go do your Sherlock Watson thing, because it's so impossible the evil book repository is punking us. Sheesh, I didn't mean it personally or anything. Huh. Where'd these come from? <laughs> okay. Yes, very stylish, but my eyesight is 20-20. Thank you very much. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I told you the library was up to its old tricks. Maybe. Did you or did you not just witness felony assault I wear? Low grade telekinesis is just how I communicate. So when it attacks in the basement, it just felt we were neglecting our Faulkner? Yeah, pretty much. Anything? Other than eye strain, no. Mm. Wait, there's some kind of runes forming around the door. Do you recognize them? No. But I'm not sure that matters. They're translating themselves. Huh, awesome. Can I just... Okay. A. Al. B. Why? What? Do you recognize them? Or what do they say? Hello, idiots. Well, that sounds super mystical. I think whoever wrote this could see the future. How could you possibly know that? Yeah, you, the vampire, and the two dropouts. They were totally able to see the future. You're running out of time. If you want to stop her, the Book of Lives is the first talisman. Anything else? No, there was just some kind of date and a bird sigil. 1874, that's the year the university was founded. Book of Lives is the first talisman. Did, did the dean ever say something like that? No, but there's gotta be something to it. I mean, I've seen her use charms, you know, bracelets for protection, possession, Please. amulets. Please, stop her books and talismans, it's creepy prophecy boilerplate. Addressed specifically to us. I've seen that bird symbol somewhere before. Well, maybe in the special collection. Oh. Feel up to a little research? Not really. We don't even know that the Dean is behind the whole dead blood thing. And I had plans to redo the book nook. All right, I'm sure you've got some important stenciling to do. Excuse me. Nothing. Just because I'm not flinging myself face first into your Kill Bill quest to end your mother. Laura, 
None of us will be free until she's dead. Dead. Pushing up daisies, no fog in the mirror, definitely not coming back dead. You've been clear. But since when do you have a problem with me choosing handcrafts over mortal danger? I don't know. Maybe I just remember a girl who rallied an entire university to find her missing roommate. Maybe I remember everything that happened after that. Do what you like. You know, there's a difference between learning from your past and letting it rule you. Hello, ducks. I'm not interrupting anything important, am I? Hello, mother. What do you want? <laughs> you never call, you never write. You stay hidden away in that moldy old library. Oh, are you feeling sorry that you and your goons haven't been able to break into a library? <clears throat> As Silas's primary sponsor, Corby Corp would prefer you use the term intern. Goon doesn't stress the potential for career growth that our entry-level positions offer. It's definitely why the Zetas jumped on board. Well, intern, collaborator, dead man talking, it's all the same to me, really. You see, this kind of hostility is why we need to chat. Clearly, you can keep disemboweling the help and snooping around my business until I find a way to track down that tesseracting book nook. Crack open the enchantments, keeping me out, and kill you all, but frankly, I'm a busy woman, and that sounds time-consuming. So, I'm prepared to offer you a truce. Stop prying into my affairs, and I'll leave you alone in your cozy little library. All we have to do is back off, and you'll stop trying to kill us? Well, isn't she the clever one? Maybe it's worth thinking about. I mean, if she really is willing to leave us alone. Yeah, and just how long until she's done with whatever she's up to in that pit before dispose of meddling teenagers returns to the top of her to-do list? Age has made you so cynical, darling. Listen to your little pet. Stay out of my way, and you can play house in that jumped-up reading room until the end of your meaningless lives. I may not be able to reach you right now, but... Force me to come and get you, and the results will be unpleasant. Am I making myself clear? Transparent. Wonderful. I look forward to your unconditional compliance. Oh, something's changed. Something's rattled her. Something we know or something we've done. Or maybe your mom is as sick of this whole grudge match as we are and wants some peace and quiet. So she can what, finally catch up on her reading? Look, I'm not saying trust her. That would be ignoring the death threats and the possessions <sighs> and the centuries of human sacrifice. I'm just saying, maybe the problem is that we cornered her, what with all the murdering her minions and trying to kill her. <sighs> maybe if we back off, play it safe, we can find ourselves some leverage. Really? So you think she'll just give back to her if we ask real nice? Oh, you should start a hashtag. After everyone? Everything we lost. Truce is better than you and LaFontaine and I risking our lives. Well, it would be if she actually meant it. But what if she does mean it? <laughs> I have known my mother for over 300 years. She doesn't do truces. She doesn't do mercy. The only reason she'd be talking to us is because there's something we've done or something we might do that makes us a threat. It's put us back on the board. The board! What? The Board of Governors. I told you I'd seen that creepy symbol before. It was totally the seal of that creepy owl lady from the board. And she was totally an oracle. Ukuku, the prophetess of Iridu. Do you think she's the one who wrote us that message back in 1874? I mean, it's possible. If the board was supposed to keep control of the dean, maybe she saw the dean was going to try and get rid of the board and wrote us down a message? And kooky lady couldn't have warned us before, oh, I don't know, all of last semester happened? Well, I don't think anybody's claiming she was a very good oracle. She definitely missed the part when Vordenberg was going to kill her. Okay, so this book of lives, maybe it was like a board backup plan or some kind of weapon? Or a bargaining chip to get revenge of the body snatchers to give Perry back. Okay, where do we look for it? Well, it just so happens we have 142 years of board meeting minutes in the back catalog. Lucky us. Let the mind-numbing Gordon begin. If the dean finds out you've opted for secret weapons research, that's the end of any chance for peace. Well, I'm thinking that won't be a problem if she doesn't find out until I'm killing her with it.
How goes the secret truce violating archive dive? Well, somewhere around 1924, the tech started moving on its own. So either the board schemed to do something with the cross team with werewolf hormones that's somewhere else to be, or I just really need to cavernate. Did you find anything about the book? Or the Hellgates? Or the talisman? Would you care if I had? No, of course not. Hmm. Because I have this scarf I'm making. Really? That's why you were looking at the crime board? Just ran out of yarn. Wasn't feeling guilty about anything. Of course. Oh, God, what now? Okay, don't want to alarm anyone, but you know how our lives kind of depend on my having figured out what kind of crazy the library is going to throw at us next? Yeah? Oh, it's gone insane. Like somebody poked it with a sharp stick? Like we're being attacked. Yeah, I think maybe your mom figured out what you were up to. Howling Abyss, uh, Hellscape, Desert, the interior of some sort of a space whale? How is the Dean even doing this? No idea. Oh, red room full of knives. Uh, the, the Dean can't just break in here and get to us, can she? I, I don't know. I think the library's shifting like this to get away from her. Nuclear wasteland, iceberg, room full of knives again. Oh, Hermione! Oh, oh, you just had to go and make your mother angry, didn't you? Wait, you're blaming this on me? I don't know if you noticed this. But until you went looking for the Necronomicon, we weren't under siege. How would she have even found out? Uh, I don't know, maybe the board minutes were alarmed. You said the tech started moving. Cyberpunk dystopia, angry shrimp world, ooh, a room full of knives. It really likes that one. Uh, yeah, or maybe it was her plan all along. <sighs> Wait, how many times has it shown us that red room? Uh, the tornado of knives? It se seems to be stuck on that. Do you think it means something? Could be. I hey, I, I think there's something on the altar at the end of the hall. It's. It's that creepy owl symbol again. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Where are the glasses? Give me the glasses. Give me the glasses. Uh, yeah. Okay. The book we need's in there. How could you possibly know that? Because of the giant set of glowing runes that say the book you need is in here, idiots. There's no way that it says that. Uh, yeah, you're right. Idiots translate something to more like go brain idiots, but I thought it'd be concise. We are not going in there. That is a bad room. The library is pointing us right at it. Maybe it is, and maybe it wants to help, or maybe it wants to grind our bones and make its bread. It isn't big on consistency. And have you looked in there? The Cenobites want their playhouse back. I am not giving up our best lead because you would rather redecorate than risk getting a paper cut. I'm a vampire. That's not even the point. What is? Fine, let's say we fling ourselves into that chainsaw masquerading as a room and you get your talisman. You know what happens next. The book is just gonna tell us that we have to go to some hell dimension for a secret potion, or outrun the nation death beast, or 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 after that there'll be another thing, and another until finally one of them gets us, or your mother gets us, or we drop dead of exhaustion, and I don't wanna live like that anymore. I just want you and me and laugh to live our safe little lives, eating out of vending machines and not dying for no reason. As touching as this was, think I found a flaw in your will be safe in your plans. Uh, the Dean can't keep this up forever. I will be dead way before that. Uh, please, Carm, don't. I've lost too much already. I can't lose you, too. Sorry, Katie. Safety's never really been a good look on me. Hey, score one for the library. We're saved. Hooray. You'd think that since everything in this room is part of the library, it'd be more careful about messing itself up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't conceptualize order and chaos the same way we do. Hey, can you stop with this dress cleaning? You're making me miss Perry. Sorry, I just, just didn't want to think about... How long now? 36 minutes, 12 seconds. Four minutes later than the last time you asked. You know, as soon as I'm finished gearing up, I'm going after her. Nothing's stopping you from coming too. I can't believe she did this. Really? Yes! It's selfish and inconsiderate and... Totally in keeping with her brand new, all-consuming desire to kill the Dean? I mean, what does she expect us to do? Just follow her blindly into terrifying danger because you shouldn't put people in a position like that? You don't say. And, I mean, we just barely got away from the Dean last time. What does she think we're gonna do if we get our hands on the book? Carm can't expect us to just back her up on that. Look, I'm pretty sure Carmilla's not expecting you to back her up. Oh, God, do you think... You think because she's been in there for 36 minutes? 38. 38 minutes that she's dead? No, what I'm saying is Carmilla's got a fairly good grasp of the obvious. The obvious. 
that you're reacting to the trauma and disappointment of past failures with the combination of deliberate withdrawal and denial. As far as defense mechanisms go, it's been pretty effective. I see. So you think I'm too much of a coward to go in there? No, I don't think you're a coward. Frosh, over the last year, I've watched you take on a vampire with a spatula, a diabolical corporate takeover with a news podcast, and a murderous fish god with no plan whatsoever. So do I think you're afraid of a souped-up blender commercial? No. You're afraid that if tragic vampire lover out there gets her hands on something to use against the Dean, you're gonna lose her. And between all your repressed, squishy feelings and everything you gave up trying to save her, you were completely unable to deal with that possibility. That, that's not what I'm... My feelings are not squishy. Of course, the only problem with that line of reasoning is that denial or not, books in talismans or not, Carmilla is going after the Dean who, if the state of our drinking water is any indication, is using the Book of Revelations as a warm-up act. Do you really think our friendly neighborhood vampire stands a better chance without whatever help we can give her? Look, if you're not ready, you're not ready. Sorry, laugh, I just, I can't. They survived this LaFontaine is so cut off from psychology today. the only one. If that was well, If that was the library's idea of helping, I think it needs to review the concept. Well, if the book is a weapon, maybe it needed to test us. We have the unworthy. You've got to admire its creativity. Very Indiana Jones. Yeah, I'm feeling very appreciative of the blow darts in my- Hey! She who jumps into death traps does not get to whine about her butt hurt. Oh, is that so? Yes. It is a very well-known fact that I just made up right now. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Just make up all the rules now. Well, that's what happens when you mm. disappear for so long. Oh, yeah. repress squishy feelings here. Cute as this whole butt hurt thing is, I'm gonna go analyze this desiccated book husk we just risked our lives getting our hands on. So, <clears throat> congratulations, I guess, on the whole successful book quest thing. <sighs> Don't worry. I'm sure it'll send us hunting some horrible death beast soon enough. Good evening, students of Silas. I come to you tonight with sad news. Well, most of you are, of course, fearfully loyal. There remain those who insist upon defying their dean, who think the simple fact that I haven't been able to reach them yet means I have no way to hurt them, as though their teachers and classmates and friends are not here in my power. And so, with that in mind, my dears, let's discuss the concept of Consequences. It is so disappointing to offer an olive branch only to have one's efforts rejected. But I'm not one to waste a teachable moment. And so an object lesson in the cost of defiance. You all remember our beloved journalism professor, Miss Cochran. Apparently, the professor disapproves of Silas's new direction. So much so that she decided to impersonate a student named Nellie to infiltrate the site of the new Corvée Educational Center and send classified information to unauthorized personnel in blatant disregard of Silas's communications policy. As such, I've had no choice but to strip her of her tenure. <laughs> and all its attendant privileges. Let me be perfectly clear, students of Silas. Disloyalty will not be tolerated. Whatever the plans you're currently hatching, they're already doomed. 
Okay, you're right. She knows about the book. But how could she possibly know? Does it matter? She has secret spies or spidey senses or a freaking mystical panopticon, which is why we should never have gone after her in the first place. No, 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 but something's tipped her hand. She's made a mistake. I mean, she would never, unless there's something in that book that's a real threat to her. Yeah? Something that could finally end her. Tell that to Professor Cochran. And the great evening star fell, burning to carve its path through the gates of Urgul, eight pointed, and for every point a watchman, for the dead, the ocean, the bones, and the great grass plains. For every point a shackle closed, for the dead, the ocean, the bones, and it just keeps going on like that for a while. Remind me if I'm ever writing a world-saving book of prophecies that extended metaphors of bad luck? You think? Oh, look, this one rhymes. Perfect. Four to make a circle, four to make a cage. The word, the blood, the chalice, and the liar's heart presaged. You know, maybe it'll make more sense after a good night's insomniac staring at the ceiling. Sure, you do that. Hey. How are you doing? After watching my favorite teacher of soul get sucked out of her body, peachy. I know Professor Cochran was an academic zombie resurrected to save on faculty salaries, but she taught me a lot. She gave me the only A I ever got at Silas. <laughs> and you still think making nice with my mother is the way to go? It's not that I don't get it. After everything she did to you, to me, your matricidal urges, totally justified. It's just, everything I did last semester played directly into her hands. The choices I made that got Danny killed, that got Maddie killed. They came out of me believing that my life is some kind of story where good stood up, fought and vanquished evil, and that love can never hurt you. And you're right, that was naive. So, I'm trying to figure out what the new world-wise Hollis would do at exactly the moment that you decided to graduate from Apathy Gal to Lady Vengeance. <laughs> and welcome to Irony Land and its sister nations. Serves you right, Laura. I'm not doing this to punish you. I know. If I really thought it'd be as simple as get all four talismen, stop the Dean. Wait, what'd you just say? Get all four talismans, stop the dean. Where in the name of all that's unholy would you get the idea there are four talismans? Are you listening to the book? Four to make a circle, four to make a cage, the word. That's probably the book, as Cookie Lady you said. Cuckoo. Yeah. She said that the book was the first talisman, right? Which leaves the blood, the chalice, and the liar's heart per se. Yeah, exactly. Dollars to donuts, those, whatever they are, the other three talisman. And you need. Four to, four to make a cage. cage. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Four <laughs> board members, four talismans to cage the dean. Not quite as clear cut as one ring to rule them all, but I think a half semester of English lit can't handle. You're amazing. It's possible the extreme crafting wasn't quite using all my bandwidth. I mean, do you even realize if we could get all four talismans and, and finally, and my mother? Do you realize what this would mean? You mean. Besides getting to go somewhere with an actual beach for summer vacation? No more running, no more hiding, no more constant threat of her hurting us. Going to a school where the only thing you have to worry about surviving are your exams. <laughs> getting Perry back. Finally being free. To do anything, go wherever we want. Oh, like Paris. We could go to Paris and, 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 uh, and get a crappy apartment and read Simone de Beauvoir and eat chocolate croissants. And by we, I mean you. You could do all those things. That anyone to remind you of past disappointments. I, I, I should. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill something to eat. Go.
because I do need to be haunted by my stupid mistakes forever. Greetings, researchers of the future. For tracking purposes, it is the 78th day of my involuntary expedition to the Silas University Library. Efforts to breach the university's outgoing firewall continue to be futile as the encryption algorithm evolves faster than I can analyze it. Whatever the deans got wired into the system, it is next level. Meanwhile, on the forcibly extract the malevolent alien entity possessing my best friend front, Progress has been made in the acquisition of the Book of Lives, which may well be the first component of a fourfold supernatural containment device. I'd like to be able to report more, but due to recent personal developments, my colleagues are less researched focused than I could hope for. Exhibit A. Hey, uh, can you read me back that footnote on personal boundaries? There are cobwebs. As if Laura hasn't spent the last two months obsessively cleaning every square inch of this place. Still unconvinced? Exhibit B awaits. Oh, oh, sorry. Just me. after you. Mm, go ahead. No, no, it's fine. I can get all soapy and naked another time. Not, not, not soapy and naked. I bathed soapless and with my clothes on. Still on the fence? Let's proceed to Exhibit C. The way I see it, we've got three major avenues of inquiry. One, what are the other three talismans? Two, what exactly is the Dean? How is she possessing Perry? And three, what does she hope to accomplish by opening up the gates of hell? You know what? Give me the glasses. Seriously? Hey, working so hard, thought you might want some cocoa. Oh, did we get it on the book? <sighs> That's it. How in Scully's name are we supposed to find the other talismans and save Perry when you two idiots ruin everything with your insipid relationship drama? Figure it out! Sheesh. They do sort of have a point. Clearly, there are feelings that we have for each other. It's just, things are also complicated with the past and us being really different people. So maybe it's better if we just acknowledge that there are feelings, but that it would never work out and clearly it's getting in the way. So maybe it's best if we just tried to be Friends. Friends? Seems healthier than the whole doomed relationship thing. Well, I guess as long as I don't have to braid your hair and talk about girls, then you can call me whatever you want. 
Young Frankenstein will be pleased. Wait, didn't I leave Maddie's locket? Darlings, I thought I'd check in and make sure you got my message. You mean your impromptu journalistic roast? Mm, yeah, you completely convinced us that we'd be safe in your clutches. That was hardly the point, dear. You're usually so quick on the uptake. Oh, yeah, sorry. I guess we were a little distracted with your complete failure to break in here and make good on your threats. Tell me, does it smart being outwitted by a pile of brick and mortar? Are you so sure that's what happened? Is it just me or is it getting kind of cold in here? Wily as our bookish friend is, there's only so much of space and time to hide in, and doing something momentous, say, opening an ancient book full of powerful prophecies, why, that might just be like shooting up a flare. You're bluffing. If that were true, you'd be here already. Maybe it's entertaining to think of you and your little powder puff grappling with real prophecy. What would you do if you found your doom waiting in those pages? What would you do if you found hers? <laughs> but perhaps you're right. Perhaps I'm only bluffing. Maybe even if I did find you, the enchantments keeping me out of the library might be too strong. <sighs> what could I possibly do about that? You look positively chilled, little one. Has someone left a door open somewhere? Hey, we need to borrow a book. Danny, you're alive. How are you alive? Uh, it's not a good idea. Zena doesn't have a heartbeat. She's a... The Dean turned you into a vampire? Surprise. God, Danny, I'm so sorry. If I would have known, You would have what? Sent flowers. Weren't you a little busy surrendering the campus I died for to save your sweetie bear? Before my body was even cold. You'll have to forgive my associate's lack of professionalism. Vampires, you know. But we are here in an official capacity. The Book of Lives is the exclusive property of the Corvée Corporation. Hand it over now and we won't have to forcibly expropriate it. <laughs> forcibly expropriate? Oh, meathead. You've gone and forgotten who can rip out whose spleen in this equation. Yeah, that would be me. Carm! What's the matter, dead girl? All those times we tussled, now you're not up for a rematch? Scared of a fair fight. What my associate means to say is there's no <coughs> point in trying to keep the book from us. She's more than capable of- Ugh, can the business speak? Your major was sports management. Besides, the book is right there. Danny, this isn't you. Whatever the Dean did to you, it's not you who you really are. You think I'm upset because the Dean made me a vampire? As if it wasn't the best thing that has ever happened to me. What was I before? Weak, gullible, naive. Dead. You could hardly wait to get rid of me. That, that's not what happened. Please. Like you cared about anyone except your precious Carmilla. Why are we still talking about this? Break some bones, grab the book. The boss lady is not a fan of inefficiency. Sweet gig, Xena. Better, faster, stronger, and taking orders from the toady who killed you. Whatever. He's not even the only person in this room who's tried it. Mm. Yeah, you hate me. I get it. But you know, the longer you let Mother twist you into her tool, the more you'll have to regret. And trust me, eternity's a long time to live with it. Are you feeling sorry for me? <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard in ages. God, the way the Dean talks about you. You used to be terrifying. Her red right hand standing beside her when the final gate opens in the new world Whoa, begins. whoa, 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 yeah, by all means, explain our plans now look right at you. to them. Carmilla, the fangless wonder, the vampire in love. That's, that's not even, we're just friends. Really? That's interesting, so I guess you wouldn't mind if I do this. <sighs> I mind, but Hollis, I'm finally your type. I thought you liked the bad girls. You know, I'm really starting to miss the humorless do-good in you. Let her go, Lawrence. Ooh, what's a non-girlfriend to do? Surely a talisman that can control your all-powerful, epically evil mother is more important than some friend. So you're gonna hand over the book? 
Or am I finally gonna get a taste? Now we're talking. Hand it over. Fine. Have it your way. Get away from my daughter, you bloodsuckers! <laughs> My own recipe. Do so you think that's gonna stop me from <laughs> dying? Dad! Sweetheart. <laughs> oh. 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 Still all about that bear spray, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything we need to talk about the friends you're making. Danny's not a friend. Really? Because couldn't help but notice you went for snowy Uberwald instead of live volcano. Not now, okay, Carm? God, Dad. Wait, how are you even here? Last time we talked, you were packing the car to come get me for Christmas vacation, and then the earthquake started. And... Yeah, well, you remember Mrs. Kransky, right? Well, her son, Louis, he applied to Silas, and he uh, brought him along to check out the campus. And then when the earthquakes happened, well, we got stuck in Einhorn for the night. Around 3 a.m., I get woken up by Mr. S Mr. Hollis. Dude, your daughter's making some crazy-ass vids. Video? You saw my videos? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The missing roommate. Human sacrifice. My roommate, the vampire, bit me. Well, the blood loss was minor. <sighs> But none of that compares remotely, remotely compares to the fact that you were possessed by an evil, supernatural, evil dean of a private university where I am paying an exorbitant amount of tuition to keep you safe. <sighs> anyway, I left Lewis in Einhorn and I nearly drove off the road twice trying to get here and then the last huge earthquake just swallowed my car and I was rescued by a giant which would really have been upsetting if I, you know, videos hadn't already broadened my horizon. So anyway, this giant Bob, he needed help navigating through the Styrian Alps, and uh, he has a cousin, apparently, who works here. Do you know him? He works in the phys ed department. Anyway, everything was fine. We decided to hike in together, and everything was going great until we came across a, a safety patrol of Styrian villagers. Well, it might as well have been the crowd scene from Frankenstein. And then I managed to sneak onto campus while they just kept chasing poor Bob with those pitchforks. And then it was just about little tiny swarms of dragons and talking fungus and a lady who I think was a harpy. None of them, none of them had any idea of what might have happened to you. And then I saw this door and I put my ear up against it to listen and I hear you. I hear you getting assaulted by a vampire again. So how many of my videos did you see exactly? Hey, Laura, great news on the research front. Dad, Dad, this is my friend, LaFontaine. Laugh, this is my dad. Wow, you weren't kidding about the overproductive bit. I'm pretty sure my parents have rented out my room to a nursing student and decided she's my replacement. LaFontaine, Laura has talked about you. You're the biology major with the sampling obsession. And uh, who doesn't want to, beside it, doesn't want to be a girl anymore. Dad, that's what? not... It's what? fine. Uh, it's less about the she and more about the they these days, Mr. Hollis. Oh, of course. My apologies. Uh, it can take some getting used to. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can deal with vampires and giants. This is hardly a stretch. <laughs> that's very logical. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, speaking of vampires, uh, do uh, you ladies and, and not ladies just mind giving me a moment alone with my daughter? Please. Of course. Thank you. Come on, Batsy. I need an extra pair of eyes on these. Sure. So, uh, look, honey, I only saw Louis Kransky's greatest hits, but believe me, it was more than enough. Good. Because some of those videos might have been edited in ways that could be misleading. Really? So, uh, so you're not camped out in an evil university, dating a vampire who nearly gave you up as a human sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, but escaping the evil university was complicated, and Carm, Carm would never hurt me. She saved my life. Oh, would your life have needed saving if she wasn't in it? Do you remember what I said to you when you told me you were a lesbian? Thank God you finally said it. After that. 
better find a girl who deserves you. Yes! That! That! And this might be so shocking to you, but Murderous Vampire wasn't exactly what I had in mind! Dad, seriously, are you more concerned with the evil university or my love life? Is there a difference? <laughs> it's not even like that. We aren't even really together anymore. Really? All right, well, okay. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's much more complicated than what I've seen, and uh, she does get points for saving your life. So, um, so we can take her with her when we leave. You just have to say your goodbyes before we get home. Wait, what? Home? Yeah, honey, I just spent the last five months battling through untold insanity trying to find you. You beg your sweet bippy I'm taking you home. So your dad's on an epic quest to find a healthy vending machine. You know, for a complete paranoid, he is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, I thought you'd be all Hollis reunion after party, but instead you look like somebody ate all the marshmallows out of your cereal. He wants to take me home. The same man who used a baby monitor on you till you were 11. Yeah, shocker. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can tell him I'm an adult now. I can make my own decision. What decision? If Dad's plan can really work, if his friend can get us out of here, after everything that's gone wrong, everyone we've lost, the idea of getting the hell out of here, well, what about Perry or JP? We don't know if either one of them is still alive. We, we don't have any evidence that they're not. How, how can you even be thinking about leaving when most of the student population is in chains and the dean is planning on opening up the gates of hell? Yeah, this situation is dire at Silas University. Guess what? It always has been. The only thing my getting involved ever did was make it worse. You know, as one of those who was almost fish food, I don't agree. Look, you're scared, and you're allowed to be, but no one's coming to save us. We are all that we've got, which means that if we leave, it's over. So those are new. Yep. Do we have any idea no. how they? Well, that's suspicious. Yeah. They look almost Sumerian. Maybe Carm can help translate. Yeah, I think she's a little preoccupied at the moment. Yeah, because I need life advice from a man who found out about vampires yesterday. Well, you catch up fast when one of them is lunging at your daughter's neck with her razor-sharp teeth. For the last time, I told you I needed the blood to stop the little weasel who was about to get us both killed. Oh, well, that makes it all better then. <sighs> are you ready to go? Go. OK, let's everyone take a breath. Carm, maybe let's ixnay on the Udblay talk around my dad, yeah? and. Dad, maybe you can hang out with Laugh while Carmen and I chat. You can tell them about that panic room that you built with the autonomous ventilation system. Yeah, go play MacGyver. You know what? It must be so easy, right? Mm. To have this luxury of being so blasé about all this violence. Because the image of my daughter's bleeding neck is burned in my mind. The idea of her laying on the ground bleeding and never getting up. Dad, 
all right? How many times has this place and these, and these people nearly taken your life? Well, I'm not giving them another chance. First light, we're getting out of here. First light. So you're leaving. He wants to take me home. And what do you want? I don't know. I can't remember the last time I felt sure about anything. I've been so scared for so long, the thought of going home. Sleeping in my bed, in my room, with my books, with no one trying to kill me. It has a certain appeal. But will I ever be able to forgive myself if I just run away and leave Perry and all the students in the pit behind? Leave Laugh? Leave you? What do you want me to say? Well, we're friends now, right? So I can ask you for advice. What do you think I should do? As your friend? Of course. I think you should go. What? You asked for my advice. That's my advice. I have to say, this is disappointing. Is that the Dean? I didn't raise you from oblivion to have you turn tail at the first sign of bear spray. Does she know we can hear her? Unless I've made a dreadful mistake, Miss Hollis, the answer to that should be no. J JP, is that you? I believe so. How are you? I was ambushed uh by the gentleman from Corvé and tasered extensively. Where are you now? Somewhere dark. There are chains, wires, pain. But you need to listen. It wasn't my fault. Yeah, I blew out chance at the book with my dramatic romantic quarrels. Someone's on their rag. It's not my period, you misogynist lackwit. The plan is simple, children. Open the gates and it's my world. No more nations, no more culture, no more people. Unless you count the ones who will keep us slaves. And the only obstacle to that would be Carmilla and her doomed little paramour using those talismans to stop me. If you intend to serve me in hell, so to speak, you'll need to bring me something more substantial than excuses. Uh, hey, D-Bear, I know you're doing your dark side thing and I don't want to cramp your style, but the parody lady's talking about hell on earth. Aren't you worried that might be a little bit aggro? Kirsch, are you going to shut up or am I having beefcake for dinner? I'll be good. Say, you don't think a guy could eat an actual beefcake, do you? Because I'm seriously jonesing for protein and... G JP, you still there? For a little longer, you had to know. When she opens the last gate... Hell on earth, we all die. <sighs> No, 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 JP, you, you can't go. I, I have to find you to save you. I need, if you're wired into the firewall, there's... I, I'm not sure you can. My body, I can't, can't move. I'll send when I, when I can. So that's her plan. Unleash hell on Earth. Rule it. Kill everyone in her way. It's clear. Concise. It's why you and your dad need to get out of here. The bio major and I can find the other three talismans. Look at what you do anyway. Yeah. What good could I do? <sighs> I, I don't know. They, they look like Sumerian, but they're not Sumerian. They're definitely in the Book of Lives. They crop up everywhere the second talisman is mentioned. Are you getting anything from the glasses? Yeah, something about putting your toys away when they're done. Yeah, they definitely haven't made sense since someone dropped them. So, Dad's pretty much packed up everything, so I guess it's... Yeah, uh, no, um, I've got a lot to do. 
uh, I have to trace down where JP is wired in and make a list of demon species capable of long-term possession. Laugh. Enjoy your life, Flora. <clears throat> so, how do you plan on getting off campus? Dad's friend, Bob, the giant. Turns out he was more than a match for some torches and pitchforks. <laughs> He's waiting for us in a T4 world. You could still come with us. <laughs> yeah, bet your dad would be thrilled about that. <laughs> <laughs> He'd get over it. And who knows? Maybe the dean wouldn't even bother hunting you down. Maybe... All on Earth would just stay in a nice little radius around Silas. Not so much, huh? Come on, sweetie. We should get going. I guess I just never really imagined it ending this way. How did you imagine it ending? I don't know. I mean, Dad came all this way, and it's not like I'm some indispensable chosen one, and, and the smart thing to do would be to leave, right? Clearly. Bob's waiting. Except, I don't know. I guess I thought I'd graduate and get a crappy job and go to Comic-Con with a girl I love and... And why should that be too much to ask? I mean, why should the Dean just get to decide that she's all power hungry and wants to be queen of hell and ruin everything for the rest of us? Do you care? You're going home. But I can't, can I? Not really. I can't just pretend that hell on earth is gonna stop at the doorway of my childhood bedroom. Well, it depends on what I reinforce it with. No, Dad. You want to keep me safe, and I get that, but this isn't your decision. If the Dean is planning on ending the world in an all caps kind of way, I'm not safe on the sidelines. None of us are. The only way that we'll ever be safe is if we stand up, if we stop her, if we fight. If you think I'm leaving you here. Dad, look at this face. You know this face, you know what it means. And you know that I'm right. That's why you're gonna stay too. All right, well, this discussion isn't over, young lady. I have faces too. So, how exactly does this new world-wise Laura Hollis plan on stopping my mother? Well, we need three more talismans, right? I think I know where to start looking. All right, about a year ago, I put my journalism project up online because my roommate was missing and unbelievably enough, I'm doing it again. With JP and the library's help, Laugh thinks we can get one blast through the firewall. So we're broadcasting everything we've recorded over the last few days because you need to know what's going on. The Dean of Silas is some kind of ancient, unkillable, seriously evil thing. She's possessed my former Flordon and is using the student body as slave labor to open the gates of hell. Near as we can tell, she's got four open already, and when she opens the seventh, it's gonna unleash, well, hell, which from everything we know is gonna be immediately bad for Silas and shortly thereafter the planet. When I put up that first vlog, I didn't know if anyone could help. But if you're out there, if there's anything you can do, help us with the weird non sumerian symbols we can't translate, loan us a secret wand or an army of ghosts or Death Star blueprints, anything, we'll take it. If we're still, you know, alive in a few days, we'll try and broadcast again, but until then, just keep on hoping. So not exactly we will fight on the beaches, huh? Was I not inspirational enough about the impending doom? <laughs> Look, we have to stop the Dean. I wouldn't be getting my Christiana Manpuron if that wasn't the most important thing there is, but 
The girl who thought all she had to do to save the world was get a webcam and be all stand women of Gondor? She doesn't live here anymore. I'm a realist now. I'm glad to hear that. Because if you're planning to stay here and save the world, then we need to establish some ground rules. One. No more keeping secrets about vast supernatural conspiracies. That's fair. Two. No more gallivanting off on dangerous missions. Okay, we don't gallivant. Three. You run by any plan or activity that you intend to undertake by me for safety assessment. And you will wear any safety gear I deem necessary. Dad, I, I am not wearing a biohazard suit again. <sighs> So I'll just be anywhere but here. You must think I'm ridiculous, what with your sex, blood, and rock and roll attitude. But this is my job. Just making sure that she is, is safe for as long as possible. And how do you plan on doing that? By locking her up in a tower? It's a thought. Maybe something with really high walls. Yeah, like a deep moat, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe one of those man-eating uh, dragons to guard yeah. it. You think that would work? Hmm. I don't know. She's always had a knack for finding trouble. Oh, don't I know it. <laughs> when she was five, she tried to rally her kindergarten class against the evils of princess culture. <laughs> that was no less terrifying then. I bet. See, which is why I don't understand why you would have her stay here instead of coming home with me. You think it was my idea? What? She... Oh, please. She did not dig her heels in until after her little <laughs> chat with you. Trust me, if she were listening to me, you'd both be on your way back home. Well, yeah. that is unexpected. Thank you. Did she really try to start a kindergarten uprising? And there she was, just pigtails and all, and she says, I have proof, Mr. Vice Principal, that you have been embezzling from the fourth grade candy gram fund. You're kidding me. And he, he had to resign. <laughs> in fact, there was a picture of her in the local newspaper that I think I mm, still have yeah. in my wallet. Uh, Dad, uh, no, that's what are, her preschool what you... pageant right there. What's I'm just showing here? Carmilla some photos. Some baby, oh God, this is what an aneurysm feels like. No, come on, don't be embarrassed. Oh, that's her little ladybug no, costume. No, 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 it's time for you to go. You have to help LaFontaine with a science power tool. <laughs> just, just go. <laughs> I don't know what you're getting all pink and huffy about. You mean besides the mortification? He's proud of you. Which is amazing when you're five. At 19, he could start treating me like an adult, you know? I don't know. The only father I ever had saw me as an inconvenience until I was old enough to be traded as chattel, so I can't really empathize with embarrassing wallet photos. Carm, I, I didn't think of that. Nah, it's okay. It's not something you have to think I know, about. but no, it is, because we're friends now, right? Yeah, sure. Friends. Yes. Friends. You know, people who care when their callous attitude hurts the other one's feelings. What do you... Wait. Is this because I wanted you to leave? No. Yes! Do you know how that felt after everything? It was to keep you safe. Which is all you've been saying you've wanted to do for the past two months while you moped around embroidering firefly dialogue on the curtains. <laughs> and then you didn't even go. Well, sorry, so my post-traumatic revelation was inconveniently timed for you. Your post Oh, you mean how you're a realist now? Yeah. A, a, a realist? Really? Well, it's better than being a... You're just lying to yourself about that. A, a what? Smug. Hypocritical. Superior. Delusional. Condescending. Tightly wound. Narcissistic. Oh, frissy, uncaring. Nerdy. Nihilistic. Little journalist. Little you wish undead.
Oh my god. Betty? Regarding Doomsday broadcast at Princeton. And if you and Single White Vampire aren't too busy, I've got your translation. I'm sorry, what? Those symbols you're whining about? They aren't Sumerian. They're Proto-Akkadian. They mean shepherd and sword. So I'm pretty sure your second talisman is the light-eating butcher knife Drizilla dropped in the anglerfish pit. Hey, Betty, and anyone else who might be watching. It's been about 72 hours since you popped up all ex roommate ex machina, which, for those of you who missed it, went pretty much like this. What? The sword. What? The second talisman is the blade of Haster. I'm sorry, I seem to think you keep saying that the soul-sucking sword that probably only left Carmilla alive because she didn't manage to, you know, kill anything with it is the second talisman. Sharp as ever, Hollis. No wonder your first choice college was an evil death trap with a second-rate journalism program. <laughs> Since when is she an expert in ancient Mesopotamian languages? My high school GPA was a 6.7 morticia. When it turned out an evil fish god had decided to hijack my brain, I did some research. Was becoming an expert in extinct languages supposed to be hard? Which just left us with the issue of getting our hands on the sword. Last we knew it was where Carmilla had dropped it, in the anglerfish pit. You know, the Dean and her minions from Corvée are currently engaged in the archaeological excavation of hell. Like, literal, actual hell. Okay, so we repel down. Repel? We have no idea how many minions the Dean has down there, or how deep the excavation goes. Okay, okay, so I build us ninja suits and we hang glide <laughs> into- Ugh, oh, you numbskulls always make everything way too complicated. I go in, I get the sword done. And the possible army waiting for you? Well, it's simple. I carefully, stealthily, eviscerate anyone stupid enough to get in my way. Like the Dean. Well, in the event we encounter her, I've narrowed down the demon list to about five kinds of awful she could be. There are the Sumerian ones called Lilitu. You can use an amulet to cast them out. So a one in five chance. We play exorcism roulette with the Dean? You know, I bet nobody ever accused Tesla of playing exorcism roulette. Sounds like your dad's plans are ready for some applied genius. Let me know when yours are. And Dad's got a new project. Of course he does. With my luck, it's probably one of those tracking chips they put in pets. Look, I know you'd much rather just lone wolf it into the pit and grab the sword. Really? What gave you that idea? Because it's what you always do. And I get it. No fun discussing strategy with the preschoolers when you're so much smarter than us. And it only gets worse when it's about your mother and your revenge, because then you might have to admit that your feelings are getting in the way. Then you might have to admit that you, you know, have feelings. I think you better leave the insights to those who attended freshman psychology cupcake. Like it's some profound revelation? You never want to admit how you feel. Not how angry you are. Not how scared you are that you'll never escape your mother. Not that you don't know if you can ever forgive me. Not that you aren't as confused as I am about what that kiss meant. Please. You think nobody's ever kissed me to make themselves feel better? That's not what I was... Of course it was. Okay, you want to talk about feelings? You're scared, and you're lonely. And you're not sure you're up to saving the world because you couldn't even save this place. And you wanted to forget that, so you let go of your little friends act and you kiss me, and that's fine. But it doesn't mean I'm gonna blindly go back to following your lead. I need that sword. And if you don't have a plan by sundown, I'm getting it myself. So yes, if you were wondering, it was possible to make the Carm situation worse. For Lo, I am Laura Hollis, romantic kryptonite. What would Hermione do? You're right. I should definitely worry about averting the apocalypse and not about the feelings. Or the kissing. So. Instead of obsessing, I have found us a primo source of intel. You may remember these weird bursts of static we were getting a while back. Turns out it's Mel, who's been podcasting the lowdown from the pit on the Silas Ethernet. Hi. 
so glad you found time to care. I mean, it's not like we've been down here for, oh, two and a half months. I can't believe I thought this was going to be an actual rescue. Hey, this is totally an actual rescue. The same way your glorious plan to reclaim the school ended with Lawrence, all evil dead, and the rest of us in a literal hellhole reenacting the Ten Commandments? Okay, yes, that plan hit a few snags, but we have a new, much better plan of which you are an essential part as our pit person. Pit insider? Ooh, embedded pit correspondent. This is the worst. We just need to figure out what's going on down there so we can nab the sword, collect the other talismans, defeat the Dean, and let everyone go. Wham, bam, totally a plan. Laugh, are you okay? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, no, not to throw a monkey wrench in all the planning, but I think I figured out what kind of demon the Dean is. Laugh, that's amazing. What are we looking at? Sumerian wind demon, creepy super succubus, ooh, terrifying gorgon. Can we exercise her? Yeah, uh, it turns out that's not so much a problem, because the Dean is a god. Like a god? <laughs> Did you just... Like a god. Like a full-on as flies to wanton boys, destroyer of worlds, I'm the alpha and the omega god, god? That doesn't seem... Okay, uh, yes, mother is controlling and immortal and, and narcissistic, but... Good glorification. There's no way that she's a... She's a god. Do we have a plan for a god? Not really, I'm an atheist. Okay, hold up. Before we deify anyone, you stop mentally Googling your favorite mythological quotes, and you explain to me how you came about this little revelation. Okay, so I've been making a concordance of the Book of Lives, looking for clues about the other talismans and why they might affect the Dean. And I kept coming across all these references to Inanna and Ishtar and Astarte and the Descent. That's, that's just a Sumerian poem. Yeah, but the book keeps talking about it like it never happened. Like, for some reason, this Inanna chick was psyched about descending into hell, so the other gods were like, um, or no, and they used blood magic to bind her into human form using four talismans. Which... Given that the Dean's looking to open the gates of hell and we're looking for four talismans to control her... Inanna. That's... She's a pretty big god. Like, we aren't talking about some third-rate footnote in charge of sheep bedazzling. That's like your nemesis is Zeus or Odin. And Zeus and Odin aren't real. Wait, are Zeus and Odin real? Shouldn't we have known if gods were real? Of course they aren't real. And even if they were, there's no way that Mother's Inanna because Inanna's a capricious god of love and warfare. All right, but you know she loves unquestioning worship and and tricks people and threatens to summon the dead. We're up against a god. Does anyone else miss the days when all we had to deal with were vanishing girls in university? It was probably only run by vampires. Oh, hi. Hi, remember me? Hanging out in a pit full of Zetas and vampire. Oi, stomach sucker. What are you doing over there? Look, if you three are done having your religious crisis, then maybe you want to, I don't know, listen to my freaking podcast and then make a plan to get the sword. Let the wolves devour you and all your cookies. God, crap. Wow. So I guess that's been happening. It was nice to see Elsie again, though, huh? Okay, so here's the lowdown. They have us working in 16-hour shifts. And near the end of the day, they ring this big bell, and then we all trudge back up to the barracks to sleep. Usually, either Lawrence or human tapeworm Theo are supervising with a few of the corvée goons. But near the end of the day, he gets bored, so he turns up to kick off a little early, you know, for beer and a hearty round of harassing the female prisoners. That confusion's probably your best chance to slip in. And the sword? Do you even know where it is down there? Well, that's the good news. I mean, if any of this can be remotely considered to be good. Nobody wants to touch that thing. I mean, her supreme prissiness won't even go near it. They had us wall it off behind a cairn of stones while we were digging down to the first gate. All right. So we wait for the shift to change, sneak in, and dig out the sword, yeah? Oh, I still think if we had ninja suits and hang gliders... We'd be the henchmen from a Bond film. Simpler and less prone to mid-air collision is definitely more our speed. And I'm sure Carm will even back me up on that. Wait, where's Carm? Did she leave? Vampirella? She just grabbed a spear and left, but how did you guys miss that? Okay, here we go. Almost there. And there we go. Okay, I'm fine. Stop fussing. 
Oh, I see. So fine is our new code word for mysteriously lost consciousness <sighs> at the pit and had to be rescued by the frail little humans, huh? Yeah, I must have just hit my head on a rock while I was digging out the sword. Oh, well, I guess it's a good thing then that you didn't go down there all alone without any backup to carry you and the talisman safely out of the giant evil hell pit. Is there going to be a lot more of this gloating? Because I'm starting to miss unconsciousness. <laughs> I guess the library's pleased. So, victory! Well, mostly, despite Carm's little case of the vapors, we managed to steal the sword, sneak back to safety before the Dean even noticed we were gone. Score one for the team. Laura Eileen Hollis! Did you pick a fight with a god? Uh, Dad. No, no picking fights. We just, we just had a small errand to run and... Hmm. Into a giant hell pit that you snuck into without telling me. Hell pit has such pejorative connotations. I'm sure it's Denizen's preferred netherworld excavation. No, 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 no. You are not wheedling out of this one. We agreed. No, Dad. You agreed. And what do you expect me to do? In the course of my lifetime, you have protected me from polyester. Well, they have those carcinogens that leach into your skin. Swimming holes. The amoeba that eat your brains. And my class trip to Clownville. That place is a cultural Chernobyl. We're not talking about you eating candy corn for dinner, which you definitely also should never do. But we're talking about you crawling into a pit where an evil god who has tried to kill you twice has been camped out with her vampire army. Okay, yeah, when you put it that way, it sounds kind of bad, but I wasn't alone. Laugh and Karma with me. Oh, great. The revenge-obsessed vampire and the, and the lab junkie with the self-preservation instincts of a lemming. I feel much better. I don't mean that personally, obviously. Right? No, it's hey, totally accurate. Yeah. Thanks for the support, guys. I mean, what do you think this evil god is going to do when she finds out you stole her sword? This is exactly why they kill the parents off in those stories, I swear. Because if those poor slobs had to watch what their children actually do, <sighs> they'd go mad, all right? Had... Do you think about what you did? How close you came to hurting yourself? I'm sorry, I... I'm not trying to make you worry, I just... I don't want you to be so scared for me all the time! It's too late. When I think about what could have happened to you... Dad... You can't stop things from happening to me. Life... happens. And if the Dean ends the world, it doesn't matter if you lock me in the tallest tower or the deepest nuclear bunker. Sometimes there is no safe unless you fight back. I wish you hadn't gotten so smart to figure that one out. Okay. Okay. But you need to tell me, all right? And you need to let me help. I called Dad on that one. We'll find you some dad-sized adventures. Hmm? Okay, so less adventure, more Rubik's Cube. We need to figure out what the third talisman is. Okay, we've got two out of four. The book calls the third talisman the chalice, but it also called the book the word and the sword the blood. So it might not be literal. It could be sacred wine or a favorite mug or a bong. Like, oh, like one of the board members had a secret mystical hookah. Not that I would know what a hookah is. It's like some kind of gourd, right? So the book led us to the sword, so maybe there's some sort of clue on it. Like if we spill blood on it or put it in the fire, like... The One Ring of Sauron? Are we seriously pulling our experimental procedures from Middle Earth?
Nothing. We spent the last three days burning, freezing, and psychoanalyzing that hunk of evil, and all we've got to show for it are burnt fingers. Seriously, Betty, if you have any idea about how to get this thing to spill its talisman beans... You really want to feed that ego any more than you already have? <laughs> Too much help us, Betty Wan Kenobi. It's hard not to be impressed. When I knew Betty, she was a hot mess, barely passing poli -sci. Now she's gearing up for her second year at Princeton, summa cum laude, VP of the debate team, and nationally ranked as a fencer. Oh yeah, and she's learning dead languages in her spare time. I mean, I barely made it through second term. Because you survived second term. And hey, if you're being graded on a Silas curve, then... <laughs> Still nice to have someone to talk to, you know? Why, you can't talk to young Holtzman? Or your dad? Or me? Of course I can talk to you, it's just... With Betty, I don't have to worry about stepping in five different types of history before I finish my sentence. Or that I'll be selfish and kiss her and clear violations of the friends guidelines. Ah, oh, I didn't mind really. <laughs> you deserve better. And you were right. I can talk about being a realist all I want, but I have no idea how I'm to do this. Yeah, you're not doing so bad. I mean, last I checked, we've got two talismans already. Yeah, I guess we do. Now, if we only had any idea about where to start looking for the third. Mm. Sweetie, I noticed that your evil sword had some dirt on it. Uh, that would probably be giant anglerfish goo. Of course it would. So I polished it up, and it turns out there's something written on it. Oh my god, that's more Sumerian. Carm, can you translate? Um, yeah, that one's necklace, and, and I think that one's secret. So it's some kind of secret necklace? Did one of the board members have a secret necklace? It wasn't a secret. It was a hid one. Maddie's locket. Which I had. And then I lost it. Hey, Betty. So I've detected a theme amongst the talismans. It's items loaded with personal baggage likely to get you killed obtaining them. I'd have preferred potent potables, but I can hardly wait to figure out what the fourth one is. Maddie's locket, but wasn't that her own super secret life extending thingamajig? No, the spell that made Maddie unkillable was on the piece of her heart inside. The locket was something else. I think she acquired it after Mother maneuvered her onto the board. I guess whatever the board was a thousand years before there was a university. Will it still work if it's all busted up? Oh, well, I'm not sure that matters if we don't know where it is. And you haven't seen it since? No, I, I took it off and the next day it was gone. I mean, maybe Red Sonia knew it was a talisman when she came here to steal the book, or maybe the library shuffled it off somewhere. Hey, I'm not the one smacking people with books and writing messages in blood, buddy. Okay, maybe let's not antagonize a sentient building. Although, if it did stash it away for safekeeping, now would be a really great time to give it back. No? Sorry, by the way. I know it's all you had left of her. I know that's my fault, too. No, it was a lot of people's faults. Lawrence, yours, mine, Maddie's. I mean, she'd have been the first to tell you she would have killed everyone on campus that got in her way. You still miss her, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, love is like that. Maybe we're coming at this from the wrong way. What do you mean? Well, Maddie, she'd never bother with all this scrambling around to find talismans. Well, the talismans were how the board controlled the dean. Yeah, but before the boards, there were the people that made them. The ones who stopped the dean in the, in the first place. Mm, yeah, but we're not talking about people, we're talking about gods. Gods who put an awful lot of effort into keeping the dean from opening the gate. What do you bet they're not thrilled about what she's up to now? But before we had a chance to really get our blasphemy on, we were saved by the bell. If by bell you mean mind-splitting feedback because JP needed the floor. So, so sorry to interrupt, uh, but, but I fear I have to risk. Explain to me why I shouldn't let my darling, deadly girl peel you like a grape. 
Why am I taking all the heat for losing the sword? Because you were the one being a corporate creep when Team Fangless stole it. I say I try the Zeta Toss. See if I can hit the middle of the fifth seal from a hundred feet up. Fifth seal? Have they already unearthed it? I'm afraid so. Time is shorter than we think. <gasps> That's enough. You never let me do anything. Don't kill the weasel who stabbed you. Don't tear the head off your precious Carmilla. Don't forget yourself, girl. I raised you from the dust when no one cared about you. Not your school, not your so-called friends. They used you up and spit you out. Did sweet little Laura even shed a tear before giving up your school for her precious Carmilla? Besides, their time is coming. I may not be able to breach the library quite yet, but after the fifth seal is open, well, keep an eye on things. I have to prepare for the ritual and put the boy down. He's of no use without a windpipe. Ritual? Is that how they're opening the seals? Yes. I'm starting to suspect some kind of sacrifice is involved. <coughs> uh, D-Bear? <coughs> I care that you were dead. And I'm not just saying that so you'll stop chowing down on me like I'm a cursed slurpee. I could see how much you wanted everybody to be, like, safe. And Laura totally cried. You were, like, her hero. You were everybody's... So thanks to JP, we not only have terrifying insight into how badly the Dean has messed up Danny, but also the totally not bone-chilling revelation that she'll be opening the fifth seal ASAP and coming for us next. Which means it's time to start looking outside of the box. Still up to summoning a bloodthirsty pagan god? We've got three candidates. Engi, the god of knowledge, Hoster, the shepherd of men, and Arishkigal, the queen of the underworld. I'm thinking she's our best bet. She's like the Dean's sister, or Reflection, or both. And the locket is hers, what with the book belonging to Enki and the sword to Hoster. And it's her turf the Dean is looking to take over. Okay. Well, why stop at Bloodthirsty Pagan God when you can go full on Death Goddess? Thinking the reason that we're always in over our heads is that we keep on picking fights that are over our heads. If the Dean has some supernatural nemesis who might want to help, why not give that a try? Well, would you look at that? Laura Hollis, chess master. Look at us. Making plans, strategizing, comrades working shoulder to shoulder with no desperate kissing or lusty sexual undertones. No awkwardness, just good old fashioned platonic buddies. Uh, yeah, so. Oops. Hey, Betty. That was definitely not supposed to happen. It's just... She was being all supportive and... Ugh, stupid... Sexy vampire... Stupid... Desperate hormones. Just... It was just a slip, right? One-time thing. Because we are grown-ups. And grown-ups don't just fling history and caution and all this stationery on top of their desks to the wind. Grown-ups control their hormones. They do not control us. Hey. I was thinking about doing a coffee run. Do you want anything? Yeah, yeah, coffee sounds great and totally normal. I really like coffee, buddy. Yeah, I'm getting you decaf. <sighs> I'm doomed. Hey, Betty. I thought you couldn't get through the communications block most of the time. Sometimes I just say that so I can screen your calls. Because, and I can't stress this enough, having to listen to you describe your dysfunctional sexcapades with puss and biker boots makes me want to punch out my eardrums. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. I... Focus up. The Dean is already onto the fifth gate and you need two more Horcruxes, Hollis. Yeah, about that. All right, let's say I admit hypothetically that our best chance at getting the locket is summoning up the Dean's underworld nemesis. How do we even know she has it? And how are we going to get her here? And then when she's here, do we even think she'll give us the locket? I mean, she's the Dean's sister. How do we know she's even on our side? Well, the locket is hers, and she made it to trap the Dean to begin with. Not to mention that she apparently knows everything the dead will ever know, which sounds like some sort of clairvoyance, which might even include the fourth talisman. So my vote is that we give one of the invocations in the Book of Lives the good old Silas try. Like, 
See, here, we could, uh, we could use the essence of the Death Lady to draw a circle and then contain her. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard to kill anyone if you're all incorporeal and trapped. Okay, so we make a circle, summon up this Resh Kigal, and then what? Convince her to give us a locket on her shared burning hatred for the Dean? Oh, we've done stupider things. Although, we didn't have to run those plans by my father. Into the bag, Dad. Just keep breathing into the bag. And now, a quick recipe for Death God Summoning. You will need half a cup of... desiccated spiders, of course. Why couldn't they just use powdered sugar? What would be wrong with a little powdered sugar for once? Three. <clears throat> All right, here goes some witchcraft. So, um, hi, Queen of Death. We were thinking we'd invoke you by the names of the Queen of the Earth, she who guards the gates and knows the names of all the dead. We bind you and command you, stand before us now. Pretty please. And she has to show up eventually, right? She's alive? How is that possible? Maddie, how are you here? Yes and no. Here and not. Uh, Maddie's here. But so sweet Sarah Jane and Naughty William and Mercala Karnstein, 18 and so excited for her very first ball. I've never had a friend. Shall I find one now? <laughs> The dead are so many. I don't know why she picked me. Is she some kind of ghost? Why is she here? Why are you here? We didn't call you, we called you. Arishka girl. She's here too, looking through my eyes, speaking through my mouth. All the dead are hers and she doesn't like to give them back. She has a voice like the earth cracking open to swallow you. She looks at you and sees all that will be, nothing but bones. This isn't right. Did we screw up the summoning? Oh, no. You did a good job. Top marks, as always. Even if you did copy Jenny Slater's homework. But the toothpaste was already out of the tube. Mother had already opened the door. Wait. So the Dean's sister decided to send us a dead person as a messenger and chose... Khan's sister. I think she likes the irony. I see you. You took the locket. Third talisman? Hers. I couldn't leave it lying around. Well, now that we know what it is, can we, you know, have it back? No. 
Not yet, anyway. The Queen of Blood and Ashes isn't so sure about you. The Holly Girl. Oh, fresh and pink and far from her kingdom. She doesn't like that you snap your fingers at her like you're summoning a servant. She doesn't like that you keep what isn't yours. <laughs> she doesn't like that you want her to fight your war for you. She sees your fear and your despair and your tiny, broken heart. There has to be something that we can do. We need the talisman, we need her help. You do have one thing she wants. Something that's hers that she'd like sooner rather than later. Death? My death? Something like that. But she wants everybody's death, even those who are already dead. But yours will do. Well, you can see how that might put a damper on our partnership. Is your boss lady really that jazzed to have her sister move in with her? There has to be some kind of deal we can make. No. Not a deal. A wager. The way Carm and I used to have our dinners cut cards for their lives. High card lives, low card dies. What kind of wager does she want? The traditional one. A game. You win. You get to keep my locket. You lose. You belong to the Queen of Smoke and Bones. Who gets to pick the game? Again. Traditionally, that would be the challenger. I can pick any game I want? Laura, what are you doing? Getting us a third talisman. <sighs> okay, Laura, I know that looks like Maddie, but it's not. It's some kind of ghost or avatar speaking for a death god. You are playing chess with a death goddess. Actually... T-E-R. With R on the triple word, for 65 points. What? You didn't think the all-seeing goddess of the underworld has ever crashed a Scrabble tournament? Well, if she did, she should have paid better attention. Q, U, I, X, O, T, R, Y. Quixotry. That is, uh, two triple word scores in all seven of my letters for a grand total of 365. Booyah! What? <clears throat> you said I got to pick the game. I did. I couldn't interest you in a rematch. A game with a little more gravitas, with a prize a little closer <clears throat> to your heart. <clears throat> yeah, that would be a no. She won that fair and square. Whoa, hold on. What kind of game? And what kind of prize are we talking about? An old game. One they used to play on the steps of her cigarettes, the Royal Tombs. It's a much harder game to win, with a prize much more worth having. And that would be... Oh, Laura? No. It doesn't matter what kind of bait an all-seeing death god dangles in front of you, we're gonna take the locket and then we're gonna take our chances. You're not Fine. gambling your life twice in one night. Fine. So, we have the book, the sword, and the locket. Three down, one to go. How do we figure out what the fourth talisman is? You still haven't figured that out yet? Enki's book, Pastor's sword, my locket. Only one remains. The liar's heart. The human heart given to the Covenant. The heart of a Silas board member. But there aren't any humans on the... The only human on the board was... Vordenberg. And I killed him. Hey, Betty. If if you're screening, don't worry. I have no plans to assault your delicate eyeballs with more TMI. So we can move straight on to, guess what? Not only did I murder an old man, but I also pooched our best shot at stopping the end of the world when I did. Irony! Which, of course, our newly resident evil was quick to point out. So you used the charter to shred the guy containing the fourth talisman like a stack of incriminating paperwork? Ever consider switching sides? Okay, that's enough. Oh. 
Sorry for feeling snippy about winding up the incorporal go-between for the teenager that got me killed, and a truly, and I cannot stress this enough, terrifying death goddess. I didn't mean to- Oh, let the dean play you for a chump? Use you to remove the board and destroy the last failsafe that could stop her? Mother played us all, Maddie. The only difference between you and me and Laura is that she doesn't have the centuries of life experience <gasps> to see it coming. I know it probably doesn't matter, but I'm sorry. My, 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 who peed in Pollyanna's cornflakes. Maddie? Sorry. I'm here, but I'm not. When the door opened, she pushed through, but that takes effort. I'm the shape of a hand in a puddle, here and then gone. Well, I mean, maybe she can send you back. You know, even if we can't use the talismans, there's got to be another way. Maybe. I hope so. It's much nicer here. Voices to hear, faces to see there. There's nothing but the cold and dark and the long echo of your regrets. Honey, I'm sorry. No need. I earn them all and more besides. You'll see soon enough. Yours are waiting for you too. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. I mean, of course we have to stop the Dean, but even if we had all four talismans or we have some new brilliant plan, am I really the one to fix any of this? <coughs> Hmm. Hi. No one knows how to save the world when they're 19 years old. Some of us are a lot older than that. We still haven't figured it out. I guess I'd still like to try. I mean, I know it's not like the books that I read. Battle-worn graduate of the growing up means everything gets more complicated and mostly you fail school here, but there has to be some way to help, doesn't there? Even if it's harder than you thought? Even if you don't know you can get it right? You remember when you were six and I crashed the car? Weird segue, Dad. Just bear with me. It was a normal summer day and we were driving home from the grocery store with our popsicles and some kid took that curve way too fast and came right into our lane. And I woke up with my head on the steering wheel and my broken legs and car was already filling up with smoke. You had this goose egg on your head. And you were just in the front seat, just wailing away. And all I could think was that you needed to get away from me. You just needed to get out before you suffocated from all that smoke. But you wouldn't do it. You stayed there in the passenger seat, just wailing away, rolling down the window, screaming, 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 screaming. The paramedics came and they said that they, uh, that you probably saved my life. And even then, you were willing to risk your life for someone else. And that has terrified me for a long time. And, and I realize, I know, I realize I can't just lock you away. That's not an option. But I really wish I could. I, oh, I really, really, really wish I could. But I can't. I can't control everything that happens to you. So what I should have been doing is helping you find other ways to... Just helping you. At the very least, I should have just done better background research on this school. Not to question your keen fashion sense, Dad, but what's with the backpack? Honey. Planning a trip? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am. 
I, I am. I mean, I, for the past five days, I've just watched you. I've just watched you fighting vampires and solving puzzles and, and just summoning death gods. And you, are, you, you are fighting the end of the world. And there should be somebody helping you. You should not be doing this alone. You shouldn't be. There should be policemen and, and, and firemen and, and just grown-ups, just grown-ups. And I know I can't, I can't make you live behind a bulletproof hamster wheel. So Bob and I, Bob and I are going to hike back into the world and we're going we're gonna to find those policemen and, uh, and ambulances and, 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 and armies, armies that should be helping you. And we're going to march them back here so they can do their friggin' jobs. Yeah. Anyway, there's something I want to give you before I go. All right. Your project? Yeah. Now it's just you know, you use it just in case of an emergency. Hmm. Dad, you didn't build a dirty bomb, did you? Oh come on, it's not that drastic. Just to make sure you just use the lower settings. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh. <sighs> Can't believe you're leaving. All right. Well, I will be back. I will be back as soon as possible, okay? And these, all right, give to you, okay? Here. All right. Oh. <laughs> you just, uh, you keep her safe, okay? All right. And, yes, um, sir. huh? I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, even though, you know, I haven't really seen anything coming into this room, I just, you know, being safe. And uh, then it has all... Dad. What? No, I'm just... Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Was that you? No. Okay. You. You. Listen to me. You take your vitamin C every day. All right? And get out once in a while. Take a walk. And when in doubt, aim for the eyes. I am so, so very proud of you. Me too, Dad. All right. Should I go out there? Oh, jeez, thank you very much. You okay? Yeah. Thanks. It's just... <laughs> there went my dad, who thinks Murphy's Law is one of the Ten Commandments to try and rally the Bundet's Polizei to stop a god. <laughs> so, um... We should talk. Talking would be good. What do you want to talk about? How about you risking your life to get that talisman? Really? Wouldn't rather talk about Rube Goldberg competitions? Because those are a thing, you know, which is just very, very weird. Laura, you can't do things like that. You do it. Well, that's different. How? Because I've lived and died and lived again. Okay, do you know how sick I am of this whole you're too young and innocent spiel? Yes, because you are so withered and jaded and wise to the ways of the world at 19. Well, I'm sorry that you haven't discovered my newfound skills in navigating moral gray areas and coping with past mistakes and being all mature and healthy with my relationships. Mature and healthy? Really? That's what you're gonna... That's what you're gonna call what's happening right now? I'm not saying that there haven't been slips. Oh, okay. Office furniture related slips. But look at us now. We're having a perfectly civil yeah. conversation. 
<laughs> oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> turning out to be habit forming. So, clearly the mature thing to do is apologize for redefining the term desk jockey. Hopefully before you send me more listicles about chronic oversharing. It's just, never really tried the whole friends with an ex thing before. And I'm pretty sure this is not how it's supposed to go. Anyway, with the talisman plan dead in the water, it's back to the drawing board to try and figure out how to stop the Dean. Of course, we all have different opinions about what that might mean. Carmilla, for instance, feels like aggressive intervention would be best. Room full of knives, poison, and we light her on fire. No, no. While LaFontaine would really prefer something that would keep Perry in one piece. I guess we get a shot call. Right around her neck. Just like this. Ooh. 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 And me? Well, I'm considering a variety of options. I want to end the world! Hmm. I hear you, but I feel like there's something else going on. Maybe you just need to talk it out. Do some yoga. We haven't really come to what you'd call a consensus, but... JP, are you all right? Do you have more intel? I, I think you should call LaFontaine and Miss Karnstein as quickly as possible. It's entirely possible I've stumbled on a plan to save Miss Patty and defeat the Dean. If what I've learned in my observation of the Dean is correct, she is on the verge of opening the fifth gate. When she does, it'll leave her drained. There'll be a window where she's vulnerable. Vulnerable to what exactly? If my espionage is viable, a kind of radical exorcism. So what, the littlest day I just happen to stumble upon an exorcism ritual oh. that'll roust a god? Well, if the talismans are a no-go, it's at least worth a try. I don't know, even if we think we can perform some sort of godectomy, how are we supposed to keep her from killing us all if it doesn't work? Oh, we could use the circle we tried on Maddie. Really? The circle that couldn't even hold the ghost it was supposed to? Perhaps there's a way to improve the efficacy of the containment spell. We could ask Maddie for help. You know, see if her death goddess boss has any pro tips to offer. See, we put her in the circle and get our William Friedkin on. Come on, this is our first real shot at getting Perry back. She's been possessed by an evil god for more than six months. For all we know, her brain is tapioca. What are we supposed to do? Just let the dean have her? Yeah, well, until we have a better plan, then we'll ask her real nicely to get Perry back. Yeah, we are running out of options. She has been trying to break in here since we hid here. Bringing her here past all of her defenses. Okay, is what will our thing? defenses be worth when she unleashes hell on earth? What, are you gonna break out into song? Yeah, now? like this is a joke to you? What's with. Oh, laughs back at it again with the uh, prophecy glasses. <laughs> hmm. Well, that was about as much fun as dental surgery. Anything it settled after I left? Oh yeah, definitely. That I don't care nearly enough about Susie Homemaker, that I am a hormone controlled idiot that only cares about one person in the universe. <laughs> Speaking of hormone controlled idiots, about yesterday. When we um <laughs> slipped? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been thinking, and as much as I can talk about not wanting to be all... This just keeps happening. And it's not like massive mind-bending denial is really healthy either. Not typically. And... You're an adult, and I'm an adult, and we seem to be enjoying each other. Well, there is definite enjoyment. So I'm thinking that maybe we could just, you know, continue that enjoyment. You know, as long as we don't get all 
doomed and star-crossed about it, we'll be fine. We'll keep it casual. <laughs> light. Very light. Hmm. So, I mean, theoretically, if we wanted to have a little fun right now, we could definitely do that. No reason we can't have fun whenever we like. Hmm. Make the circle. LaFontaine, tell me you didn't just kidnap the Dean. <sighs> Are you insane? You brought her here? The only reason we're not messily dead is because she couldn't get to us. Yeah, she's a real threat, all unconscious and drooling. Oh yeah, well she won't be unconscious forever, lab rat. How did you even get her here? Everything went just like Jeep said it would. They cleared away the dirt around the stone seal at the base of the pit. And then she went down, got all chanty, and this weird light cracked right through the center of the seal, and then she weebled and wobbled and dropped. With a little help from a high-voltage stun gun. What about Danny and the Corvée goons? How did they not even see you take her? Well, you'd be amazed what you can accomplish with a few elephant tranks. Okay, okay, I very much get that this was not plan A or even plan Z, but it looks like JP was right. And now that we have her, shouldn't we at least try the exorcism? I mean, what else are we gonna do? Mail her to Siberia? Nope, it's too late for that. We need to kill her. No. We can't kill Perry. Well, we can give her the old college try. Oh, you know, it's been a while for me, but I'm pretty sure it's just like riding a really violent bicycle. I won't let you. Who said anything about let? Harm, no. Ugh, then get her out of here. We have to get her out of here. Throw her into the volcano. Feed her to the space whale. I am not giving up on Perry. We have to try. Fine. You know, I'd say we'd regret this, but I don't think any of us are gonna live long enough for that. Are you sure this is gonna contain her? As long as no one breaks the circle, and it won't have to hold her for long. The ritual JP sent us is supposed to be performed at midnight, which gives us about three hours. And then we're handing the Dean an eviction notice. So I guess there's nothing to do now except wait for midnight. Why don't you take first shift? Hey, Pear. Been a while, huh? And you're kind of running with a new crowd these days. Just wanted to say I'm sorry, you know? That I got so caught up in my stuff, I didn't see what was happening to you. And I know it wasn't just last year that we'd been growing apart for a while, what with my conspiracy, the weird kick, and you just wanting everything to be nice. Mostly, I'm sorry I treated you like wanting things to be nice with small. Because I know that's what it's like in there. It's this thing in your head telling you that you're weak, that you're small. But don't believe it, okay? That's, that's just a story it tells you. Tell yourself a different story. Because you're not small, okay? You're the biggest thing in my world. I'm getting you back.
Wakey, wakey. Time to rise and get the hell out of my friend. What is the meaning of- We're having of an exorcism and you're uninvited, Laura? Anabiti sa irabusu mulki. Oh, please. As if a splash of holy oil and that scrap of a ritual could- <laughs> Anabiti sa irabusu mulki. The minute I am out of this circle, little girl, I'm gonna turn you inside out. And I am not gonna be quick about it. Ah! You'll be defeated by some empty-headed, whinging little- Anabiti sa irabusu mulki. <laughs> That's really Perry. She can do it on her own. Carm! No, no, it's okay. Because all she has to do is lift one little finger over the circle, right? Right? Come on. Yeah, that's what I thought. Nice try, Mother. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> You know, I can't say this is the reception your doting mother was hoping for. Oh, gee, I'm, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. Remind me, how does Emily Post suggest welcoming an evil god possessing her friend? Are you really gonna pretend to care about Curly Sue? <laughs> Believe me, this is the most good the little piglet's ever been to anyone. With her head full of sugar and spice and everything useless. You, you shut up! Give her back! Whoa, whoa, give her whoa, back! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, okay, let's not give the omnipotent evil an easy out by breaking the circle, okay? <laughs> my, my, my. Touchy, aren't we? Why are you doing this? Doing what? Pop it. In case you hadn't noticed, you kidnapped me. Why do any of it? Possessing people, feeding girls to evil gods, trying to open the gates of hell? Why did you find a book labeled Villainy 101 or were all the good god gigs just picked over by the time it was your turn? Ugh, don't bother. Be easier getting a straight answer out of a snake. Oh, snakes are such misunderstood creatures. Some of Theophobe writes a smash bestseller and suddenly you're to blame for all the evils of the world. Oh, that's what's going on here? You and snakes just the victims of bad press? Because that doesn't explain the part where you're trying to end the world. What's so wonderful about this little carnival ride? Hmm? I've seen a lot more of the world than you have. And do you want to know what makes it go round? Greed. Hypocrisy, stupidity, violence, the strong prey on the weak, the corrupt on the foolish, and even those with the best of intentions can hardly help but do more harm than good. <laughs> Let's be honest, the world really isn't gonna be any worse for my opening the gates and taking over. Just abruptly quieter. We stopped you before. Stop me? <laughs> oh, poodle, if anything, you made all of this possible. Without you and the glorious mess you've made, I'd still be on the board's leash. You'll be back on it soon enough. And how do you plan to accomplish that? Given that you shredded that fool Vordenberg like a tissue. We have the first three towels moving okay. as soon as- Yeah, yeah, that's enough. But she's officially got you explaining our plans to her. Oops. <laughs> Ooh, so forceful. Guess we know who's in charge these days. That's a surprising change for you, dear. Well, what can I say? You inspire me. We'll go through our plans somewhere a little less earshot. And leave me here all by my lonesome? <gasps> Whatever will I do? I'll watch her in shifts. She's gonna try to get into our heads, but don't let her. Don't talk to her. Don't listen to her. She will try to break us. She was so dissent. She preys on weakness. Is she out? Yeah. Nothing like umpteen hours spent emotionally annihilating your enemies to leave you plum tuckered. Well, I told you not to listen to her. Everything she says is a lie, Laura. Except it isn't. Everything she says is true. Yeah, the way she says it is all horrible and twisty, like some evil total perspective vortex, but it's still true. She's loose because of me. There's no getting Vordenberg's heart to stop her because of me. And even if I had the best okay, intentions Okay, stop. I stop. Look, 
you're struggling, okay? And you're allowed to because Cupcake, the universe is huge and it's arbitrary and uncaring. You know, one moment you could get sucked into a hell pit and the next moment you could get pulverized by a meteor and really in the grand spectrum of things, it'll mean nothing. This is your cheering up speech. It needs a little work. <laughs> okay, well, I was evil for the better part of three centuries, so, you know, give me a break. But just, the point is, if nothing means anything, then the only thing that means something is what we make. You know, I mean, look at me. I, I used to use hopelessness as, as an excuse for all of the awful things that I did until this prissy little overachiever that I was totally planning on handing over to my mother unraveled all of my plans because she thought we all deserved better, even me. And yeah, you are flawed and struggling and uncertain, but it is so beautiful the way you try. What? To hell with light and casual. I don't want to be light and casual with you. I don't want to pretend that what I feel about you is some stupid frothy thing that doesn't matter because it is like the axis that my world turns on. And yeah, we could talk ourselves out of it because this is scary and and hard and, and, and maybe the world's about to end, but if it is, then I want us to have something good to hold on to. Shouldn't that be something good? Oh, how sweet. Doomed, clearly, but still very sweet. Oh, you have no idea how much I'm going to enjoy killing you. Run along now, Carm. Time for Mama and I to have a little talk about exactly who's doomed. Matska, I was wondering if that was you. I like the new look, by the way. Incorporate reality suits you. Can't really take credit, what, with you manufacturing my death to open the first gate? A touching reward for a millennia of loyalty. Well, you found another to serve soon enough. You mean your sister dragging me from my rests to stop your madness? Why is it that whenever a woman decides to go after what she wants, there's always someone there calling her crazy? The punishment didn't fit the crime, dear. All I wanted was the return of what was mine. And Ereshkigal and Enki in the Valley Men bound me to a corpse and made me subject to fools. Fools that subsequently orchestrated a millennia of war and murder. Sure, there's the occasional bright spot like Tiramisu or Rachmaninoff or whoever makes those internet videos about honey badgers, but Mostly it's the Inquisition and the Black Plague and reality television. They left me here to rot, listening to my daughters crying out in pain and fear, able to do nothing. Don't sing me sad songs about your daughters. I lived that. The ones you fed upon. The ones you fed to the beast to keep it sleeping. The ones you raised as Judas goats to lead the others into your traps. My family trapped me. 
Then history forgot me, it became the province of men. So I learned what any smart woman eventually learns. If you can't beat them, join them. Come, you can hardly blame a girl for falling back on blood sacrifice once the worship wore off. Oh, so I can see how risking the end of existence is justified. You think I care about this roundabout little rock? About the great above or the great below? They took what was mine, and I will have it back. I am the queen of blood and life, and none shall deny me. You were bound before. Sure, but how do you think you'll manage this time? Only two gates to go, and not only are you fresh out of Wardenburg hearts, you're dead, honey. Are you forgetting who I'm speaking for? She's waiting for you, in every shadow, in every lost moment. She will strike you dead and hang your corpse on a hook. <clears throat> yeah, sorry to interrupt what is clearly a very productive family therapy session, but I'm thinking our day would be a hell of a lot less stressful if you didn't let her trick you into letting her loose. I guess we'll have to take this up later, mommy dearest. Just go back to your boss, see if she has an idea of what to do next. Alone at last. Oh, yeah, you can keep talking. I'm just gonna be uh, over here imagining your face in one of those masks from Silence of the Lambs. Now, darling, I know you're angry, but really, what have I ever done to deserve being cooped up in this Oh, I don't know. Should I go through the list of dead girlfriends, the numerous attempts to kill me? I never that tried time to kill you. you. Oh, yeah, you buried me alive in a coffin full of blood. Remember that? Perhaps I was a tad aggressive with the tough love, but... <sighs> You're a vampire, darling, and sometimes you just get so fixated on things that it's hard to get through to you. And what life lesson was I going to learn from the centuries of pointless cruelty? That you belong to me. When I found you, you were nothing more than a terrified, trembling girl. The little countess murdered at her birthday dance. I raised you up. Everything you are, dark as the moon, terrible as an army with banners, is because of me. You used to know it. You used to worship me. My darling, deadly girl, my high priestess. Yeah. I'll promote one of your other flunkies. I'm done with you. You mean your plan to do me in and live happily ever after with little Miss Goody Two-Shoes? Oh, honey. So love ever solved anything for anyone. At best, it's a series of compromises and disappointments. At worst, prelude to crushing loss. And that's without the complications of an affair that's less May, December, and more 1995, late medieval. Are you really gonna give up your place at my side for that? Well, we can cross that bridge when your corpse is floating under. I'll keep saying that, but I've got to say, I'm not seeing much in the way of an actual plan, Mercala. Well, maybe we don't have a plan right now. But as long as you're stuck in this circle, your little hell on earth project is stalled too. So we still have time. Time to figure out what to do with those three talisman locked up in the special collections? Yeah, well, it turns out we didn't even need all of them to smack you around like... The talismans. Mm. That's your play. This whole time, you've been pushing us on them. Trying to find out where we hid them, but why? I mean, they're useless without all of them. Unless there's some other way you can use them. You always were such a quick study. When you weren't missing the obvious. The obvious? The obvious, Fangster Brains. How do you break a new place to uh, anywhere it wants to be? Uh, Let the super uh, friends kidnap you. I've got to say, I wasn't expecting this particular development, but that's why one keeps one's minions close. Mr. Straka, if you please. Oh, if you let her out, you're fools! You're nothing to her! You're just saying that to save your own skin. Besides, you missed the most important one there, Vampirella. What we are... Is winning. 
Well, that is much better. So what? It was all a trick? Your secret message of weakness? Your doomed exorcism? Well, once we figured out that the library thought poor Mr. Armitage could spy on me, that hardly seemed like an opportunity to pass up. The talismans are upstairs. Go get them. Feel free to kill anyone who gets in your way. If you hurt them, I swear I'll make more empty threats. <laughs> you know? I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed in you, Lawrence. <clears throat> all those noble speeches you used to make. And all it took was a little dying to flip your script. I thought you were tougher than that. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see how you feel about dying when you play the starring role in Carmilla versus the Six Seal. <clears throat> She's lovely for the brute force, but hardly circumspect. One of the many reasons I'm going to miss you. Miss me? As one last slap in the face, my dear sweet sister arranged it so that the only way to open each gate is a sacrifice to give up something I hold dear. The sixth gate requires the life of a high priestess. Well, sadly, darling, that's gonna be you. So finding the talismans was just an added bonus? <laughs> well, I do so love to multitask. No sign of the off-brand Girl Scouts or the mad scientist anywhere. Maybe they saw us coming and decided to bail. Saw you coming? <laughs> See you going? <laughs> now, Mama, you and I should... <laughs> What's the matter, darling? <laughs> just a little dust from the grave of a hanged woman? You always did play dirty! Where'd she go? She'll be out of my hair for a little while. And in the meantime... Someone really needs to have a conversation no. with the library. Laura, run! Carm! want to be careful with this sword. You did try to kill a god with it. That sort of thing can prematurely suck out a girl's soul. Now, be a good little lamb while Miss Lawrence wraps you up to go. Danny, please. Oh, Lawrence. Is sweet little Lolo over there trying to sway you back over to a side with lady feelings because... You've had a good run of it. At times, it was almost entertaining. <laughs> but I think we both know we're finished pretending that this is a story about a little girl believing in people and trying to change the world. Now, say goodbye, Cupcake. Laura! You have gone. Well, that was greatly dissatisfying. You get all set to snap a neck and then nothing. It's like having the last page of your book ripped out. Uh, wh what did you do to her? Not a thing, sadly. But if you think that's gonna stop me from... You jumped up stack of discards. You wouldn't dare. You wretched, scheming book club. I'm gonna hack you to pieces and sell you on Amazon. <sighs> but you've given yourself away, Enki. 
You don't have the power to have done this alone. You still have the high priest. And if I can't use Carmilla to open the sixth seal, then we'll just have to see if that meddling little clerk of yours will do, won't we? <sighs> okay. Okay. <sighs> they were gonna kill her. I get it, you saved her. But you can bring her back now. You can bring her back now. She's safe now. God, bring her back. Just bring her back to me, please. Guys? Hello? Is anyone here? This is so weird. Okay, keep it together, Hollis. So the Dean was about to go all Jenny Calendar on me and, and clearly there was no way I was getting out of it, so I'm dead. Weird, dusty limbo check. Okay, no, not dead, just, just having a really weird spidery hallucination. Or the library zapped me here and for some reason picked this weird alterna library. Just totally not giving me flashbacks to the first time we broke in here. <laughs> So if you wanted to zap laugh and an improvised flamethrower in here, I wouldn't really protest. <sighs> okay, Hollis, you have dealt with vampires and, and, and hell gods and creepy frat boys, so you are perfectly capable of taking on <gasps> oh. Doc Brown. What was that for? What are you even doing here? This is a library, Goldilocks. Don't you know it isn't safe? Oh, thank Dorothy and her sparkly little shoes! Okay, don't take this personally. Laura looking like person, but are you a hallucination? I'm, I'm me. That's impossible. <laughs> Standing right here. You know, I, I get that. It's just impossible. Because you're dead. This is so weird. It's like some alternate universe. I mean, we saved those girls. We saved me. What happened? We'd captured your vampire roommate and figured out that Dean was behind it all, and then you both just disappeared. Danny tore the campus apart, Perry freaked, and her rejection of reality did not improve when they found that recording of you guys getting thrown into that pit by some creepy Zeta. Zeta? Yeah, you know, the Kirsch guy. That isn't what happened at all. The Dean had this evil anglerfish and... Okay, it actually gets pretty convoluted after that, but Kirsch was in no way responsible. I figured. Total patsy. What about you? Why are you here in the library all breaking laugh? I'm kind of banned from campus. I took over your broadcast to make sure the truth was out there, so they expelled me. And after what happened at my tribunal, it's not like I could go home. But uh, it's cool. I built myself a lab down here, and now I make homemade antidepressants. Really popular. <laughs> the bigger question is, why would the library send you here? I mean, jumping someone into an alternate universe seems kind of drastic. Cool but drastic. Yeah, especially when I have no idea how I'm supposed to get back. I think I might be able to answer that. Creepy library dude, we talked about this. You don't bother me, I don't program a virus to delete you. No, no deleting JP. Especially not if he can tell me what in the Zardos is going on. It's fairly simple, really. The library and I calculated all possible outcomes and our extent causality. And without the fourth talisman, any hopes of stopping the Dean become statistically insignificant. But. There's no getting the fourth talisman. Vordenberg's dead. Baron from the board? He's not dead. He's totally here for the 125th anniversary. Exactly. We found you a reality where you can collect the fourth talisman. All you have to do is... Kill Vordenberg. Again. I know he's an awful old man, but I could barely do it before, and that's when he was about to kill Carmilla. We can't afford to be squeamish. 
This universe is only a temporary pocket, generated with what little remains of the library's strength after all the attacks by the Dean. If you can't find the heart, by the time it dissipates, our entire world will be lost. If it helps, his existence won't extend beyond the life of the pocket either way. I'm not sure that helps. So you're saying that me and everyone I know are temporary manifestations contingent on the alterations you and the library made to the extant causality? Cool. All you had to change was me getting fed to the anglerfish? It was the best point at which to reconfigure reality. Because none of last semester happened. The Dean isn't loose and all those people are still alive. But only temporarily. You can't afford to let might have beens distract you from our cause. Yeah. Well, I can't help you so much on the ethics, but if you want access to the Baron, I think I have an in. This had better be an emergency. Dean Morgan has a very busy day tomorrow. It's totally an emergency. Laura's back and she needs our help. Hey, Pear. No, 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 no. Laura is dead. So whatever freakish experiment you've performed to make me hallucinate her here, well, it, it is just in poor taste. Didn't make you hallucinate the giant mushrooms. You inhaled spores and helped burn down the theater building. Deal. I am dealing. I have an excellent job with the administration in spite of my regrettable associations with individuals who blame campus tragedies on vampires. No, Laura is dead. I know this to be true because I organized a very tasteful memorial. And if Laura weren't dead, it would mean that your elaborate world of denial would collapse. It would mean that it wasn't over. And that the very dangerous people who killed those girls, well, they might start looking at us again. Perry, look, I know what happened was terrifying and I understand just wanting to stay safe, but we need your help. You are so much stronger and braver than you know. Trust me. You always were so inspirational. Just how you got yourself killed. You will not be getting me killed. Fair. Now don't contact me again, Sue. LaFontaine. And remember to change out your HEPA filters. There's a lot of dust in the library. <sighs> Sorry. She's been like that for a while. I guess I thought maybe seeing you again. She's so scared. Everyone is. Ever since the board arrived, it's like something's coming. So what do you want to try next? Hallway? Hallway? Uh, hallway. Anything? So the library's not moving or dropping books on us. I think it's dead. Well. It's not the only thing that's about to be. I told you not to bring Mother here. And what did you do? Now Laura's gone and you're saying there's a chance that we might not get her back? I'm sorry if there's too many variables and I don't know, she just disappeared <gasps> for me to form a cogent okay. hypothesis. Okay. Yeah. Since murdering you might be counterproductive, let's move on. What I want is Laura back safe and unharmed. And while mysteriously vanished leaves open a wide range of possibilities, I would like to exhaustively explore every last one of them, even if it means that a sentient space-time anomaly has stolen her and I have to burn it and all of its disturbing little books to the ground if we don't get her back. All right, let's get started before I get irrational. I'll go get the books. What about Danny? Locked up. After what she did to the Zetas after the whole Kirsch murder, do you think? Which also rolls out Kirsch. And the Zetas, there's not many of them left. Betty is gone. What about the Summer Society or the Newspaper Kids or the Alchemy Club? Summer's got disbanded because of Danny. The Newspaper Kids have been having some life expectancy issues after they made a mistake in a profile on the Dean. And since the mushroom thing, the Alchemy guys have been less helpful geeks and more roving fungus zombies. But all of last semester's badness was averted here. No rising demigod, no ill-advised coup. I mean, there has to be someone left standing. Oh no, quick frost, we gotta hide. Wait! <gasps> Carmilla? No. No, 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 no,
You're not here. You're not here. You're not here. Oh, for the love of... You're not here. Carmella, Sherry, if Mama finds out you're hiding out muttering in the library again, she will be seriously displeased. <laughs> As entertaining as it is to watch you do your best impression of Rochester's wife, Mama dragged me here from Morocco to get your head on right. So you might as well surrender to the inevitable. Come on. This campus is replete with terrified teenagers. Let's have one, or two, or 20, and have a grand old time. I'll let you have the pretty ones. Did you know? Did I know about what? You know what she was doing to them? All those years, all those girls trusting me, thinking I was their friend. Uh, now that's the kind of talk that leads to being buried alive. Well, at least this time I deserve it. Oh, kitty cat. You can't keep beating yourself up over your latest lost Lenore. It's Laura. You barely knew her. Yes, I know. And yes, she was young and, and naive and, and entirely too trusting, but Maddie, she listened to me. She listened to my sad tale and, and she didn't flinch away. She didn't believe I would give her up even when it was happening. You know, and I, I thought it would be better when I made her stupid, but even the little part of her that was left shone through. It was like she could change the horrible story we live in. And I know it's, it's foolish. I know, I know, I know it's foolish. And I know it's sentimental, but maybe Mother was right. How could a girl like that ever believe in a girl like me? But I did. No. No, 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 no. You are dead. You are dead. You are not real. You are not real. You are just a dream floating through a stone wall. I'm, I'm here. No, I'm real. Alive, see? Heartbeat and everything. But how can you be? Well, I'm me, but from a, a parallel universe, one where you saved me. Oh, Laura, Laura, I didn't know about the monster under the bed. I didn't know until it was too late. Hey. One broken thing can't save another. Hey, it's okay. It's okay, I know you didn't mean it. And do you forgive me? Of course. <clears throat> as fascinating as this vampire savior shtick is, those of us who are less than blindly infatuated with you are wondering what the holy hell is going on. Yes, Maddie. Hi. My friend sent me here to save Silas from an unspeakable fate. <laughs> oh, sweetie. Silas is an unspeakable fate. The dean is gonna open the gates of hell! What? The Dean, I don't know how exactly in this universe, but she's gonna open the gates of hell, which will definitely involve killing the board members and also be pretty bad for the rest of us. And I know you don't know me, but I know you, and I'm willing to bet you don't want to trade in your oak couture and take us to the Bolshoi for a pit of fire because, yeah, you're evil, but you're not immolate the planet evil. <sighs> Say, I did believe you. Mama is definitely up to something, and concern for collateral damage isn't really her style. But why shouldn't Carm and I wrap you like a box of knipshilt truffles and hand you over to save our own skins? I won't let you hurt her, Maddie. Let? Well, look at you, kitty cat. You'd pick a fight you couldn't possibly win for this preschooler. Well, that's more fight I've seen in you in... ever. All right, time warp. Explain to us how you mean to save us from Mama's nefarious plans.
And so we found this magical spell to stop her, but we're missing a key ingredient. And if you can get your hands on it, not only would Mama be unable to unleash her hell on Earth, but you could stay here with Carm and keep her all sane and happy. Which would mean I could be back in Rabat before tomorrow's dinner service at Darnashi. Uh, sure. Well then, let's rustle you up that ingredient. That's the thing. The ingredient is sorta of, kinda of Baron Vordenberg's heart. So what you're saying is, in order to save the world, you'd have to brutally rip an organ out of a doddering, harmless old man? Seems so. Oh, this is gonna be so much more fun than I thought. Can I do it? Would you? You're doing it again, the growling. Well, you aren't reading fast enough. You know what doesn't help anyone read faster? Growling. <sighs> she has been gone for more than half a day and you still don't have any idea Well, maybe she... if you stopped acting like a research slave driver and actually helped out as the only member of the party actually fluent in Sumerian. Thank you. You know, in general, research goes better when the books remain landbound. This isn't getting us anywhere. Books on tesseracts, books on the Hellgate in Pennsylvania, books on the alternative properties of those stupid talismans. Ugh, none of these tell us what the library did with her. Okay, it's research, you can't just... <sighs> Wait, what did you just say? None of these are... No, no, before that, uh, about the alternative properties. You don't think they could help us track her, do you? No. No, I, I don't think this helps Laura at all, but I think you just found another way to save Perry. Okay, all karma's gone to get me a snack, so we've got maybe two minutes. And you're sure Miss Belmont can be trusted to return with the heart? No, but I trust that she wants me to stay here and help Carm, and that she'd rather not have her mother end the world. I'd be more concerned about letting her believe you're planning on saving this world and, you know, staying here. You won't need to sustain the falsehood long. As soon as the heart is close enough to you and the rest of the talismans, the library and I will collapse the pocket and, and, and... JP, are you okay? I'm sorry, sorry. Something is happening, bling, bling, in our continuity that is painful. Hurry! I think our dean has discovered our plan. JP! So that probably wasn't good. Hey, you want some patent pending Edelweiss tea? This is one out during stressful situations. No thanks. Well, given the recent revelation that my entire reality is dependent on your need for a mystical heart and about to collapse into oblivion, I'm having some. I think it might free me up to contemplate, you know, the nature of the universe. Maybe Donnie Dark on my way out of this thing. Plus, probably shouldn't be here when Lady McVampire returns from getting you snacks. You know, you're pretty awesome in any universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch your back, brush. Hey. I, I wasn't sure what you like, so I... Brought me the entire vending machine? Yeah, if you don't like them, though, I can go back and... I'm dip. fine. Thanks. <laughs> hey, Laura, d in that place that you came from, did I really defy Mother? Head of the charge. Do you think... Do you think you, I, I mean, we could win? I don't know. It's not like the Dean has a whole bunch of weaknesses. No. I mean, you've got nothing to lose when your heart is buried. What was that? When your heart is buried. It's a story Mother told me when I couldn't stop thinking about you. There was this god, Ishtar, or a star 
Te or Inanna. It, yes, who lost her love. So she descended into the underworld and through seven th- gates. Yes, to get them back. Only the other god stopped her and cast her out, and now she loves no one and nothing, because her heart is buried. That's what she wants. Not to rule, to have her love returned. That's awful. I mean, totally not a justification to end all life on the planet, but... Well, I'd do it for you. Now that you're back, it doesn't matter if the whole world burns. Carm, I... Well, isn't that darling? That's enough to make a girl reconsider her stance on pets. Did you get it? I mean, did you... Did I tear through that lying old windbag like a tissue paper? Absolutely. Someone has spun his last yarn on the Austro-Hungarian War. (laughs) That is graphic. So what's next, parallel girl? Well, we gather all four talismans together and... Wait. Is that my locket? Well... Yes, but... And it's broken? Why is my locket broken, little girl? It's not what you think. Oh, really? So I definitely shouldn't be upset that my heart isn't in the locket, even if there's no way to remove it without, say, killing me? Oh, God. What is she talking about? You would never... She would never... Laura, you need... You need to... Hurry. The Dean, the Dean, she's here, and... We're running out of time. You have to give me the heart. Did you? In the other world? Did you murder me? I'm sorry. I... Oh, sorry. Oh, you haven't begun to be sorry. No! No! JP, you have to jump me again! No! No, you can't leave me again! No, I won't lose you again! There may be one chance to open the last gate. She must give up immortality. to see you fresh. You too. Where were you? We were looking for you everywhere. It was JP. He in the library. They jumped me to some alternate universe to get some alternate Vordenberg's heart, but... <laughs> That's brilliant. With, with all four talismans, we can save Perry in no time. I didn't get it. What? I tried, but... <laughs> can JP do it again? I don't think so. Why not? There's got to be some other Vordenberg heart in another universe. JP's dead laugh. No. No, you're wrong. He's just... He's just gone quiet because of uh, the chaos of the kidnapping. He's gonna reply any minute now. Any minute. Laugh. Hey, Betty. Or anyone else who might still be out there. So after some extensive rereading the Book of Lives, we're pretty sure the Dean has opened the Sixth Gate and plunged Silas and possibly the world into a permanent dark. We were really close to getting our hands on the Fourth Talisman, but I lost it, and now with only one gate left to go. You've reached the Princeton headquarters of the Emergency Apocalypse Response Network. Betty Spielsdorf, Executive Director. If you can evacuate your current location, please head to the backup headquarters underneath Purcell Hall. 
For those of you willing to join the front lines, bring whatever weapons you can find. We will not go into the dark without a fight. Sounds like it's getting pretty rough for General Spielsdorf. Sounds like it's getting pretty rough for everyone. With the firewall down, we're seeing radically increased incidents of vampire attacks, and now with this whole permanent darkness thing, the end is starting to look pretty nigh. Well, you don't seem as scared as you did before. You mean before I got jacked into the darkest timeline? Yeah. I think being in that place cleared a few things up for me. <laughs> After all this, what was so bad over there? You mean besides reading my own obituary in the voice of Silas? You were dead? First, it didn't seem that bad. There were a lot of people that were still alive because I didn't lose a demigod or start a civil war on campus, but the longer I was there, the more clear it came that everyone had just given up. They were all just waiting for the end. No idea how glad I am to be back here. We're all still trying. You're still you. Not some sad, broken shell. Well, you didn't see what I was like when you were gone. <laughs> I was different. The girl is hollowed out. Couldn't stand it if that happened to us. We won't let it. Hey. Even if the whole world burns, I won't lose you again. Wait, why are you still awake? Why are we sleeping at the desk? Um, A, you were sleeping at the desk and doing adorable twitchy things that I can only imagine involve sleep murdering a ball of yarn. And B, JP said something right before he, he said we had one last chance. That in order to open the last gate, the Dean had to surrender her immortality. She'll be vulnerable, so if we had some way to stop her, we have the sword. But isn't the sword useless? Without all four talismans, there's no caging the Dean. No, well, not caging, but when you were gone, I found a book that had a history of the talismans. LaFontaine thought that it would be a way to save Susie Homemaker, but it turned out to be quite the opposite. The opposite? The book theorized that because the sword was dipped in the blood of Hoster, and it carries the echo of his death, that it might be able to shatter all that oppose it. Right. Except it totally didn't kill the Dean the last time. It killed her body. Just last time she hadn't surrendered her immortality. But that would mean... We'd have to wait until she'd already made the sacrifice to open the last gate. I mean, that's a narrow window to... Kill Perry? So that's it? The plan with the talismans falls apart and suddenly it's time to kill Perry? Laugh. We have to stop the Dean and without Vordenberg's heart. Then we need other options because killing my friend isn't one. Look, I'm sorry you haven't figured out a way to science yourself a happy ending, but if it's between Betty Crocker and Hell on Earth, then I'm gonna get Machiavellian. As long as it's my friends doing the dying, right? Fine for Jeep to sacrifice himself, fine to kill Perry, but if it was Laura with her neck on the block, or Carmilla? Okay, that's enough. I want to save her too, but we're running out of time. We can't let the Dean open the last gate because we're all dead if we do. None of us can be more important than that. So if you've got a better plan, I want to hear it. But if you don't, then we have to use everything we've got. Yeah, I can see how it would be inconvenient to take murder off the table. And that's funny, because when all this started, we were trying to save one kidnapped girl. Laugh. Leave me alone. Get out!
So you're saying we let her finish the archaeology project of Doom, do the sacrifice to open the last gate, and then just hope that poking her with something pointy might do the trick? Yeah, mm, that's no. pretty much it. Yeah. We need you to get the students in the pit to rebel against the Corvegoon so there's no one down there to stop us. Stop you? What, from stabbing her with a sword you can't touch? The storm Karm can't touch. We're pretty sure I can. You? You couldn't stab a swimming pool if your body was the knife. I'll do what I have to do. Besides, we just need to know, are you in? You know, I really hate you guys. Well, yes, yes, I am in, all right? It's not like I actually have a choice what with it being the end of the freaking world and everything. Help us with our dramatic third act rescue, Melanipa. It'll be all rainbows and unicorns until the point where we end up epically dead. It would be wrong to hope that my mother turns into some kind of newt, right? Oh, look at you, mastering advanced morality. Hey, don't think you can distract me from the fact that our plan still involves you risking your life by using that soul-sucking blade of mine. Really? There's nothing I could do to distract you? <laughs> well, when you put it that way, how so? Sorry, I just, I can't sit here being all romantic when laughs right, our best plan is gonna kill Perry. Laura, it's not like we have a choice. Well, shouldn't we though? I mean, is use magical sword to kill helpless possessed girl really the best we can come up with? I mean, I mean, maybe we should be helping laugh if, if, if they were talking to us and, and you and I were really good at any sort of sciencey thing. Or, or maybe my dad's on his way with, with armies and, and helicopters and, and, or, or maybe there's something that we're missing in the magical library that we live in, like more prophecies. I mean, we still have the glasses, right? They're busted, but they must be able to tell us something. Like, oh, 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 here's one. It's a shame about the jelly paper. I always liked the Dewey Decimal System. Laura. Okay, that one's not brimming with sense, but, but, but here's another one. The shipping manifests return all four to sender. Simultaneous delivery is recommended for efficient assembly. Come on, you're just making yourself no, upset there's, now, there's Laura. There's got to be one around the desk here somewhere. Um, and where death has dominion, the holly fades, or the garden withers, unless the little growly sunbeam says no. Well, I mean, that one could be... Yes, it would be terrific if the nice and accurate prophecies of the crazy owl lady were the answer to everything. We but can't just abandon her. We need a better plan. All right. All right? Okay. Oh. Here I thought I was gonna have to make some impassioned argument against the nice expedient violence. Oh. Well, I'm fine with the viable plan A, because I can always go back on the violence. You may want to rethink plan A, and plan B through Z, because any plan that kills the Dean will end with Carmela dead. It's fairly simple, actually. It's her power that raised you, raised all of us from the dead. Once that power is broken... The... Carmilla will die? But she's alive right no, now. No, she just isn't dead. She had her share. Lived and breathed, danced and died. All done. Everything else is something Mother stole. So... Carm dies unless we magically come up with some plan to stop the Dean without killing her, which is impossible without all four talismans, which we don't have. You couldn't have mentioned this sooner. Oh, she could have. But that would have spoiled Boss Lady's Endgame. What? Oh, yeah. The Ghost of Christmas Future isn't just here with a warning. She's here with an offer. Isn't that right, sis? You played a game to win yourself my locket. The Lady of the Dead offered you a chance to win something more substantial. The offer still stands. <clears throat> You've always been willing to risk your heart for the safety of others. Play, beat me, and she'll spare Carmela. No. But Carm. No! No! She didn't tell you earlier because she wants you desperate and reckless. I don't know why she wants one human girl's life so badly, but I'm not gonna be the reason you fall into her trap. But if defeating the Dean means that you it die... It will be worth it. Go.
Go back to your death god and tell her I'll see her real soon. I hate this. I hate that laugh things were murderers. I hate that they're right because our best plan is gonna kill Perry and also you apparently. I hate all these stupid gods with their stupid games and their stupid rules. I just wanted to go to college, you know? That was supposed to be my big adventure. I can recall the feeling. I'm not here for a fight. I doubt that, baby fangs. Carm, she means it. You can't be serious. She's, she brought Kirsch. Hey, Laura. Did you know there's a giant owl pit on campus? It's like 20 stories deep. <laughs> they didn't put that in the brochure. I need you to take care of him. Oh, are you playing too rough with your toys? He isn't. I don't want to kill him, all right? There was a person I was supposed to be. And when this happened, it was like the Dean drew back a veil and suddenly I could see it was all a joke. The people I bled and died to save forgot about me the second I died. And all I wanted was to burn down every stupid, self-sacrificing thing I'd ever done for them. Except there was Kirsch. Still believing in me, even when I hated him and hurt him. He doesn't deserve any of this. And if he stays with me, I might lose control again and kill him. Of course. I didn't forget, you know. No matter what mistakes you made, I'm always gonna think of you as a hero. As far as heroes go, I'm starting to think I was never as far up the roster as you thought I was. You could still help. No. The Dean gets her hooks into me again. Besides, I've got my own things to take care of. This isn't my place right now. Good luck, Laura. D-Bear, wait, are you leaving? Yeah, Kirsch. Yeah, just give me a second. I'm feeling kind of woozy here. No, Kirsch. You're gonna stay here, okay? With Laura. So you can help her with her plan because you know the pit so well. Like back when I was her dude escort? Yeah, just like that. You're coming back? No running off to be all Furiosa without Max, right? Kirsch, you got one right. Thank you. Hey, Zena. Just try not to get any deader, okay? You too, Fang Face. Is there a place uh, a guy can grab some Z's? Or like a protein bar or something? Maybe you'll hold off on that protein bar. Well, you know. That involved a lot less bloodshed than I expected. <laughs> well, <clears throat> the world's about to end and she suffered enough. Pretty sure we all have. Hey, would you look at that? A mature Laura Hollis. Who would have thought? Hey, Wonder Twins, whatever it is you're planning, you gotta do it fast, all right? Her unreasonableness has kicked this place into high gear. We've been digging nonstop and we've reached the last seal and based on the chatter I'm hearing from Thebro and the goons, it sounds like she's planning on cracking it open tomorrow morning. God, so soon? All right, all right, we'll get there as soon as we can, but we need you to start the uprising right now. Are you insane? We've been digging nonstop for three days. We have no food, we have no water. I have people dropping like flies and every single able-bodied person I have is just trying to keep my wounded alive. Look, I'm sorry, Laura, I wanna help. I really do. You guys are on your own. Okay, so tomorrow morning, the Dean is gonna open the seventh gate. There's still no word from Laugh. Danny's out of the main fight and our only help just bailed. And Laugh... Ah, that's it. Laugh! Laugh! I know you're pissed, 
okay? And that you think that we don't care about Perry, and that you're probably never gonna forgive me. But we need your help, okay? And Yeah, it looks like they scraped an ounce of metal off the edge here. So Laventaine has gone rogue if the chunks of missing talisman and Ghostbuster-esque levels of goo anywhere are any indication. This really may be a one-way ticket. Yep. And since it is, it should just be for me. Carm? Laura, I'm doomed either way. You don't know that for sure. Yes, I do. Now, well, I think in some ways I've always known this life has always belonged to her. This is the only way I'll be free. No! We have a better chance together. I mean, besides, you need me there to hold the sword. I'll wrap my hand. Do you need me there to... Smack your head in case your mom starts in with her head games. After over 300 centuries, I think I'll do. You need me there in case Maddie's right, and once the Dean is defeated... I don't want you watching me die. That makes two of us. But you aren't gonna do this alone. But you know what would be worse? Watching you die for no reason when there was a chance I could have saved you. Laura, if you go with me, all I'll think about is losing you. And if I did, I think I'd go mad. Karma, that can't be what we are to each other. In that other place, you told me a story about how the Dean loved someone and they died and she couldn't accept it. All of this, the chaos, the misery, it's because she'd rather pull apart the world at its seams than let go. We can't be like that. This isn't like that other place where I was too weak, and you were too scared, and you gave me up. We found each other here. And yeah, half the time I want to strangle you. <laughs> but we've had kisses, and cocoa, and stars, and dancing. That's so much more than nothing. One of us doesn't make it, the other one can't end up like the Dean. Mad and bitter and destroying everything we touch. I don't want that to be our story. Okay? Our story is that we made each other better. So we go together. We try and save Perry together. We, we face whatever comes next together.
Hey, Pops. Or Betty, or whoever else might find this. Thought I'd record a goodbye. You know, in case the world survives and we don't. We're gonna be leaving soon. Taking the sword into the pit to try and stop the Dean from opening the final seal, and... Hey, Dad. Guess what we're using to try and stop the Zetas. <laughs> Promise not to use the higher settings. Just, before all this, I spent so much time trying to figure out how to keep myself safe. Not just physically. I didn't want to risk hoping too hard and ending up disappointed or loving too much and having too much to lose. Because it seemed like that's the lesson the world is trying to teach me, you know? Except now I think that love is worth the risk. And it doesn't matter how safe I try and make myself, there's always going to be disappointment and loss. There's no stopping that. Not unless you give up before you even try. It's why we have to do this tomorrow, even though I'm terrified I could lose her. Even though I'd do anything to take her place. Exchange her life for mine. Don't bother. Luca changed her mind about gambling. No. I'm done with your rules and your prophecies and your games. Carmilla was right, wasn't she? I have something your queen of blood and ashes wants. So get me a direct line to your boss. We're gonna make a deal. Are you okay? Yeah. Just, Dad's ultrasonic personal pacifier packed more of a wallop than I thought. Hope those Zetas aren't permanently deaf. Are you sure? Because you seemed pretty quiet last night. Yeah, I've just been thinking about Perry. Hey, hold the camera steady, Jughead. Hey, I've been chained to a wall and chronically underburritoed for months. I've missed like a ton of forearm days. But you idiots, shut up. We have a very small window of time here. And if we mess up this opportunity because of you two toddlers, I'm okay. going to- Okay, back it up, Citizen Fang. I should be upstairs helping my people, not letting myself get sidetracked by Toothorella and the snack food who walks like a man. But we're like guides, or the reporters who go along with the super elite commando squads, embedded dudes, only in a pit. We're like... Pit correspondents. Totally! Shh, 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 shh. Something's moving. There's no sense in hiding in the shadows. You might as well come out. Great Diana, we are so busted. Hello, Mama. Hey, it's that dead lady from the board. Why is she here? Isn't she like, for keeps dead? Was that call not close enough? Be quiet. Is my sister really gonna hide behind some bloodless wraith tonight of all nights? Maybe she thought a familiar face might stand a better chance at talking you down. The ways of the underworld are perfect and are not so kind to those who would disturb their order. She did always prefer her harbingers and prophecies to direct confrontation. Time is on her side. After all, everything dies. Not everything. Not tonight. Tonight, all the prophecies are on my side. Run back to my sister Matska. Remind her that when <laughs> her kingdom is mine, it's because she denied me my love. Nisilim, Zakaru, Ezebu, Anunnaki. Nisilim, Zakaru, Ezebu, Anunnaki. Well, isn't that strange? 
Enjoy it while it lasts. Well, hello, sweetheart. I was wondering when you'd make an appearance. Oh, so, uh, sorry, what was that? I, I was so distracted by the fact that you're not immortal anymore. We have the sword and we all know we can kill you with it. But if you stop this now and promise to let Perry go, we'll let you live. <laughs> Are you really gonna pretend that that's your plan? When killing me puts Carmilla back in the ground in the same stroke? You, the hopeful little Holly girl? Surely you have something else up your sleeve, some 11th hour plot twist, some last desperate gamble on the human heart? What the hell is she talking about? Nothing. I, I couldn't just give up on you and Perry. Of course you couldn't. You could hardly let the story end that way, my little teller of tales. Because then you wouldn't be following your heart, now would you? How can you possibly know what she said? How can you possibly know that? I don't know why you're gloating, Mother. You know, and frankly, I don't care. It's time for this to end. It really is. Laura. Now! Do it! Can't. Laura, this is our only shot! We don't have another plan! Oh, she does. Somebody made a deal with my sister. What deal? Maddie said Arushkukul would spare you and Danny and Perry and laugh if I brought the first three talismans into the pit and then followed my heart. She said there was some sort of prophecy. And so you gathered up your little trinkets and brought them here, thinking there was some other way to stop me. But... Prophecies are such tricky things. They so rarely mean what you think. Ancient logic, I suppose. <clears throat> or on the other hand, we can give this outdated mythical crap a 21st century upgrade. Oh, and the science nerd intercepts. Yes, because that's what this epic final battle needed. Sports metaphors. Everything's better with sports metaphors. And beer, and little potato skins. Do you have any snacks? Do you remember the time I hunted you for sport? Good times. <gasps> what the hell do you think you're doing? That sword was our only chance. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I interrupt your plan to kill my friend? She is actively in the process of ending the world. What's Armageddon compared to the long overdue rescue of your BFF? Oh, I'm so sick of everybody speechifying like the freaking enlightenment never happened. Cause yeah, you might have been a big deal back when we were still psyched about fire and using goat in to predict the weather. But these days, we've got nitroglycerin and portable MRIs and injectable nanobots capable of reconfiguring your synapses. I don't care what kind of big paleolithical deal you were. If you're in a brain, you're running on neurons and I am really good at neurons. Science killed God once already. Let's see about a sequel. <laughs> Did laugh just destroy our only weapon? Yeah, they just screwed us royally. Uh, they seem to be doing okay. You couldn't. Now just with little machines, little tricks. If those tiny machines were made of the talismans the board used to control you, I only have three. A liar's heart. Nothing a little grave robbing can fix. <laughs> Clever, but not quite clever enough. I'm guessing you just didn't have the right to <laughs> Or maybe it's a lack of vision that's the real problem here. <laughs> oh, don't feel too bad about it. That was awfully creative. Four to make a cage, but you misunderstood. You see, the talismans are my cage. As much as this world, as much as this body, little pieces of my power carved away by my enemies and turned into weapons, but still immortal, still mine. <laughs> and now without the board to use them against me, they're mine again. And part of the cost of opening the last gate. But you can't. You said it yourself, the bio major dug up the wrong grave. Oh, yes, about that. Our clever little friend did just fine with the grave robbing. The problem is the talisman has to reside inside a living heart. Once Vordenberg was dead, the power transferred over to the next worthy vessel. 
Oh, God. What? Harm, I'm so sorry. Sorry for what? Funny thing about Proto-Acadian. Did you know the word they use for liar is the same word they use for storyteller? That's what she meant when I made the deal with her. That it was my heart, but it wasn't supposed to be like this. I was supposed to figure out a way to stop her. <laughs> I know, I know, the irony. I was never gonna be able to open the gates without the talisman and the, and the library kept me from stealing them. But I knew my sister couldn't resist a good prognostication. And now here they are, the book, the locket, the sword. And now there's only one between me and my victory. <gasps> no! Laura! No! No, no, Laura! It really was so kind of you to bring it right to me. No, 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 no. What did you do? Oh, you're so good, girl. What did you do? You know, I really am glad you're here, darlings. Winning never really feels like winning unless there's somebody there to lose. Peter, Babkama, Luruba, Anaku. about to see his face again. Lost, and more than lost. First among the dead. For you, I have cast off my crown and lived in chains. For you, I have shed my blood and surrendered to time. For you, I have walked barefoot into hell. Pastor Aramu. Titan, beloved, live. Beloved, live. Come back to me. Maybe he's on another call. This isn't, he should be here. He should be the first through the gates. Where are you? I am descended into hell. I have made myself a beggar and a slave! You have to be here! You have to! Give him back to me! It's strange he wouldn't be here. After waiting 6,000 years? You didn't mess up your spell, did you? You didn't say, take something that needed to be freely given? You want to mock me? I will show you what it means to grieve. I may not have my beloved, but the gates are open. I will leave this world a wasteland of ash and bone. If he does not live, nothing will! So, I unleashed a murderous goddess and she's ending the world. I can't tell if that's empowering for feminism or really bad PR. You need to be still. Can we we're together? I don't want to be doomed with anyone but you. What is it? It almost feels like it's still. What are you doing? It's okay. I think I figured it out. The talismans are all still here. Their power is... Dying, girl. It's too late for talisman and birthday candles and wishing on a star. Even I can't stop the end now. Not as I am. This shell is 
broken thing. I spent so long hating you and being afraid of you that I just couldn't see it. You're broken up. You didn't just lose your love, but because of that love, they trapped you in a human body like it was chains and fear and hatred twisted you into something you were never supposed to be. Somewhere in all that anger and darkness, you lost all your hope, didn't you? Of course it's too late to control you. But maybe it's not too late to give you back what they took. To set you free. Set me free. <laughs> How did you know? Just followed my heart. Just took a chance and that she was like us. Just scared and afraid and broken. If I gave her back to herself, if I set her free. Well, frilly hell. Four gods, six millennia and untold magic. And you saved the world with a frickin' fortune cookie. <laughs> well, you don't get to call dibs on all the self-sacrifice. <laughs> You can, you can totally have dibs on the self sacrifice. No. You were supposed to stay safe. You were supposed to go back to your nice little life, Laura. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then I wouldn't have bit me. Please don't leave me. Not after all of this. Please. Please. I want There's, there's still so much I, I want to do. Do. Like, like, I, I know. I think I'd like to be dead now. It's all over. Your quest. Everyone who's dead is supposed to be dead now, right? I think I'd like to be. She wouldn't have wanted that. There are no miracles without sacrifice. And to redeem a fallen god, Bitter and twisted with loss, she did the impossible. This girl changed the story of the world. OK. 
okay? She's a miracle. And you're a god again. So you can bring her back now. You know that a sacrifice undone is a sacrifice negated. You would undo all that is. I don't care. Don't be as I was, child. Don't let grief make you hard and cold. <laughs> I'm god you are. <laughs> Go on, then. Go on! Just evaporate. Do whatever it is you do. Just leave us alone. As you wish. I cannot return her to you, but at least I can save you from suffering as I did once. Oh, no. No! How dare you? How dare you? You think I want to be mortal now? After all of this? Take it back. <laughs> Please take it back. I'm choosing to see this as an opportunity for a laser eye. You know I've always wanted a laser eye. You are so strange. <laughs> wait, 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 did, did you jab me in the neck with a syringe full of experimental nanobots? Oh, maybe almost none of the test rats' heads exploded. <laughs> what? Uh, what happened here? You know, uh, final battle, uh, big sacrifices, you were possessed by God for a while. Huh, yeah, that would explain the... Laura, poor Carmilla. No, or, or, we should go get some help, or, or at the very least a first aid kit. I think we're a little beyond first aid here, Pear. Still. I missed you, weirdo. Oh, control freak. Oh, hey, Hirsch. Sorry, sweetheart. She offered, and I didn't see another way. You knew. You and your boss. You knew what would happen if she came down here. Maybe. Just another regret to take with you when you go, then. Or maybe I've done enough. Maybe I've earned my rest. Enjoy your life, little Mercala Karnstein. My life. Yes. My life. Life, that deal she made. She came down here and she, she sacrificed her heart as a talisman in return for my life. Me and Betty Crocker Come on. and what? I have something your death goddess wants. Me. My death. A life to gamble for a life. Don't be a fool. Take your borrowed years and live. Don't fling yourself into the long dark. The queen of blood and ashes won't go easy on you. You aren't some innocent co-ed out to save the world. For 300 years, you were death. You know better than to think the world is like that. No. No, this is not how her story ends. Screw that. Screw giving up. Screw just letting go. Pick any game you want. Tonight I'll kill a god if I have to.
You cannot see me, touch me, or hear me. I lie behind the stars and alter what is real. Close your eyes and I come near. I am what you really fear. What am I? You said she was gonna go easy on me, Maddie. The dark. The answer to your death god's riddle is the dark. It seems even death can be merciful from time to time. And you did stop the end of the world. <laughs> See you around, sis. <laughs> like, like I always I always wanted to go to Paris or, or London or, or or just the world. I just wanted to travel. <laughs> take this the wrong way or anything, but why am I not dead? And do you have a heartbeat? No way for you to hide from the demon of the 